know the Sears lost all hope. All of this, but the numbers are just too great here for MVP. And he's knocking on the front door. He's knocking for that. Any of that party can now move to Zelton, and the Immortals are going to town. What's up, everybody? Welcome to BlizzCon Day One. I'm Tasteless, along with me is Artosis, and we're excited to be bringing you, um, well, an indoors BlizzCon, a mm. one of a kind BlizzCon. It's BlizzCon line. BlizzCon line, thank you. Um, obviously, the world ravaged by the pandemic. We weren't able to have a BlizzCon last year, but we're at least able to have this. Uh, and I'm excited to share these games with some people today. Yeah, this should be fun. This is the StarCraft Legends match, and boy, do we have some legends for you here today. Of course, you can't have BlizzCon without StarCraft. StarCraft, one of the games that really helped to build Blizzard over the years, and of course, for you and I, everything. That's right. Um, we have a lot of great players from competitive StarCraft, but a lot of our matches are going to be a little bit more casual. Of course, 2v2 especially in StarCraft 1 was something you would see in the competitive scene, so we're going to be having a little bit of that. Uh, but as we get further and further into our games, it's going to be a little bit crazy, Artosis. We're going to have mm. matches we never normally cast. Oh, yeah, no, this is going to be all matches we never normally cast. We're going to have two versus two matches, three versus three matches, six man free for all matches. And we're going to have that in StarCraft 1 and StarCraft 2 with a bunch of the most legendary players of all time. That's right. We're going to be switching back and forth between StarCraft 1, StarCraft 2 and increasing the players as we go along uh, ahead in this tournament. Uh, so as you can see, our lineup, so many incredible players from, from both StarCraft 1 and 2, and some that have had a lot of accomplishments in both. Yeah. Stork, Effort, Last, Rain, Nesty, MVP, MC, and Party. Parting was a, a little bit more of a practice partner, like up and coming. Right. But that's kind of how the StarCraft 2 guys were. Uh, this is going to be just so entertaining, Tasteless, to see this lineup of players going at it. Uh, before we get our game started, let's go ahead and hop into a quick interview with our players and see how they're feeling before our match. 네, 안녕하세요. 반갑습니다. 송경구입니다. 블리즈컨은 2016년에 스타트 쿠치를 하면서 외국인 선수랑 이벤트전을 했던 게 마지막 기억에 남는데요. 그 뒤에는 이제 참가를 못 했었거든요. 그랬는데 이렇게 연락이 와서 참가하게 돼서 너무나 기분이 좋네요. 네, 안녕하세요. 임재덕입니다. 제가 2015년 이벤트 매치를 했었는데 블리즈컨에서 다시 6년 만에 경기를 하게 돼서 너무 기쁘게 생각하고 일단 테란 선수들이 굉장히 유리할 것 같은데 또 게이머들의 자존심이 걸려 있는 문제라 최대한 오래 살아남도록 열심히 해보겠습니다. 고스토스 부통령 장민철입니다. 오랜만에 이렇게 찾아뵙게 돼서 너무 반갑습니다. 이렇게 좋은 기회로 블리즈컨에 오랜만에 다시 참가하게 돼서 굉장히 기쁩니다. 제가 스타투 이기는 거는 뭐 당연한 거니까 개인전에서 꼭 이기도록 하겠습니다. 네, 안녕하세요. 전 프로게이머 김성현입니다. 이번에 블리즈컨에 초대를 받았는데 되게 영광이고 스타1과 스타2 멤버가 같이 합쳐서 이제 매치를 하게 된다고 들었는데 일단은 스타1은 당연히 이길 거라고 생각해서 이제 별 걱정 안 하고요. 스타2 이제 많은 경기가 있는데 그 중에 이제 한 경기라도 이기는 걸 목표로 열심히 하려고 합니다. 스타크래프트 1 프로게이머 김정우입니다. 어, 이렇게 오랜만에 또 초대해 주셔서 너무 기분 좋고 간만에 하니까 또 감회가 새롭네요. 사실 제가 스타2는 진짜 오랜만에 하는 거라서 스타2가 좀 기대되는데요. 많은 응원 부탁드리겠습니다. 안녕하세요. 네, 프로게이머 정윤종입니다. 레인 아이디를 썼던 네, 스타1, 스타2 다 플레이했던 선수고요. 어, 이번에 블리즈컨 이렇게 초대해 주셔가지고 정말 감사드리고 다시 한번 팬분들이랑 이렇게 좋은 기회 얻을 수 있게 해주셔서 정말 감사드립니다. 꼭 좋은 경기 보여드릴 수 있도록 하겠습니다. 감사합니다. 네, 저는 MVP랑 아이디를 사용했던 전 프로게이머 정종현이라고 하고요. 이렇게 팬분들께 오랜만에 인사 뵙게 돼서 너무 기분이 좋습니다. 제가 게이머 때부터 블리즈컨이라는 대회를 가장 참가하고 싶었고 참여할 때 가장 우승하고 싶었던 대회인데 스타 1과 스타 2를 함께하는 이번 경기에서 스타 2는 꼭 그래도 다 이기도록 하겠습니다. 네, 안녕하세요. 저는 스타크래프트 2 게이머 원인삭이라고 하고요. 레전드 선수들과 함께할 수 있어서 너무 기쁘고요. 그리고 이렇게 큰 행사에서 팬분들을 만날 수 있어서 정말 고맙고 영광입니다. 하지만 근데 스타크래프트 2 대표로서 꼭 이길 거고 스타크래프트 1 선수들은 긴장했으면 좋겠습니다. Okay, very exciting uh, to see our players there now. I'm so glad we're able to have an event like this despite mm. the world 
uh, being quarantined, everybody being separated. At least the internet can bring us together. And this <laughs> match, to start it all off, is going to be these players on the classic StarCraft 1 map, Lost Temple. Oh, I, this map brings back so many memories. Uh, one of the most played maps of all time within StarCraft 1. So there's no doubt that all four of these players have played it a lot. And in fact, uh, it makes a kind of interesting 2 vs 2 map. Now let's take a look at our StarCraft 2 representing legends here. MC and Parting, of course, as I mentioned before, they were pros in StarCraft 1 who switched to StarCraft 2 and got a lot more uh, championships, fame, and all that. MC, of course, I mean, this guy is one of the most successful players of all time. He did more to shape early Protoss than anybody else. Yeah, these guys, so strong, and really in the early era of StarCraft II were the people that were able to map out a game that was, mm -hmm. frankly, very different from StarCraft I, required a different approach. And these early pioneers of an eSport like StarCraft II are really the people um, that built the road that everybody else is now traveling on. So it's gonna be cool to see them together here, going yeah. up against Stork and Rain. Oh yeah, and I mean, both these guys, of course, were very good in StarCraft II also. In fact, Rain winning multiple championships, but he's even more accomplished in StarCraft I nowadays, having won ASL and KSL. Just a, a brilliant Protoss player, one of the greatest RTS players of all time. And of course, Stork, considered one of the top four players ever in StarCraft 1. Yeah, Stork was somebody that really, uh, in StarCraft 1, showed how precise build orders can be, was somebody that was really a thinker in the game. He was actually one of these slower pros as far as, uh, as just speed win. Yeah, and he's to this day, actually, he's still competing professionally, and he is the slowest pro, as you yeah. point out. And uh, that goes to show you that as much as we hype APM, it is a lot of thought and how you play the game and approach it. Mm -hmm. And um, it looks like our game is ready to go. Again, we're gonna be on Lost Temple. This is the classic StarCraft One map. <laughs> Anybody who wasn't playing Hunters or Big Game Hunters was playing competitive StarCraft here. Yes, indeed. And it's gonna be two versus two, our StarCraft two players against our StarCraft one players. Everyone playing Protoss, going to be awesome. We have up at 12 o'clock here, this is Stork and over at eight o'clock or nine o'clock uh, rain. Then over here at three, uh, we have MC. And down at six o'clock, we have parting. So they're kind of, if you draw a line diagonally through the top right of the map, that right bottom right side is going to be our StarCraft two players and the top left going to be our StarCraft one players. One of the features about StarCraft one competitive 2v2, and I, we should note here that StarCraft one competitive 2v2 is probably the most competitive RTS team anything mm -hmm. that there ever was. Yes. Uh, this was televised out here. It was done on pro teams. And so really this is the best version of team competitive RTS that there is, and it still holds up to this date. But one of the main features about that that makes it in some ways a little bit antithetical to what people are used to in seeing a StarCraft game is that it is very difficult to expand. Mm -hmm. Traditionally, StarCraft is viewed as the RTS game, which requires um, expansions nonstop, the same is true for StarCraft 2 as well. But when you get a 2v2 in StarCraft 1, it's tough to get <laughs> even an additional base for any of the players. Oh, absolutely is the case. And I think that that is going to be something that carries over to here. Both sides uh, having two Protoss players should be seeing a lot of Zealots early on, a very powerful unit. But do you think there's any chance anyone tries to rush up the tech tree? Uh, it's definitely a possibility. Dragoons are in some ways better units uh, than Zealots because, you know, Micro is such a thing in StarCraft 1 that mm -hmm. a Dragoon, in theory, if Micro perfectly can kill a Zealot without it ever being touched, it's hard to do, mm -hmm. but it's possible. So it's really a balancing act on both sides. Um, you get Zealots, they can run over a player early on, but if somebody techs into Dragoons to stay safe, they're going to be stronger. Again, if they mm -hmm. survive that. Well, it looks like right now everyone is going two gates except for Rain. Rain is going up that tech tree, grabbing the Cybernetics Core, and he's going to be able to get into the Dragoons. I just wonder if this is going to hurt him at all. Is he going to get rushed down by mass zealots from the other players? So the problem specifically in 2v2, Protoss, Protoss versus Protoss, Protoss, <laughs> is that if one player techs Dragoons, the player going Zelts doesn't have an easy way to protect him. Yeah. And of course, there's always the possibility that the two players rushing Zelts can then, let's say that the other player is sending his Zelts to help the Dragoon teching player, you could counterattack him mm -hmm. as well. So 
the early game here is going to be the most significant part mm -hmm. of this game. We don't know how long it's going to go on for, <laughs> but because uh, there's going to be the decision to tech up right away and nobody's slow playing it, we need to make sure that these players survive because oftentimes in a two versus two, mm -hmm. the way that you win is you just kill one of the players early on and then the other two players gang up on that lone player and win from there. Yeah, now look at this. He tries to come in with this lone Zealot. This is Stork's Zealot trying to get some harassment with a beautiful probe drill right there, uh, holding that off. And that is MC's base. So destroys that first Zealot and kind of puts a stop to any harassment that was going to occur. That was, I think, possibly a mistake there by Stork to send that Zealot out like that mm. just because we have two players who are going to be teching up into mass <laughs> gateways. And we're seeing this happen right here, right now. I mean, the fact that you have this many Zealots. Look, in PvP, there's plenty of players that lose to two-gate Zealot yeah. just making a Dragoon, even at the even at the pro level, going one-gateway Dragoon. But when it's two players rushing you, mm -hmm. that's double the trouble. No, oh, totally. Look at this. A ton of Zealots from Parting coming into Rain's base. Now, Rain has some of the best micro in the world, some of the best control that you can see with Dragoons. In fact, he's known as the best Protoss versus Protoss player. So let's see if he can hold on here. Taking some damage on the Dragoon does heal up with the shield battery. But it looks like the blue team here definitely has the right idea by targeting down the battery. The shield battery cannot heal itself. And so usually in a rush, it's the first target that you're gonna be trying to go for. We have uh, the Dragoons being microed as hard as they possibly can to try to hang on here. But this is so much damage coming here oh from both Cardin and MC. There's just so many Zots getting into his base. This could be very, very bad for Team StarCraft 1. The StarCraft 2 players really showing them how it's done, but there is that counterattack going on. Uh, it looks like Stork has sent all of his Zealots into MC's base over at the 3 o'clock position. Now look at this, Parting getting his Zealots into the mineral line, but a nice drill there from, from Rain. Beautiful drill on the left side. Again, if you can keep enough probes alive, keep your Dragoons alive, especially with range finishing, you can hang on. But I'm worried more now on the right side mm. of the map about the survivability over here um, for our player at uh, the top right. That's is that MC? MC, excuse me. Thank mm -hmm. you. Um, because he's versus it's zealots for zealots, mm -hmm. and the number is so high that you are just going to lose your gateways, and from there it's very easy yeah. to just lose the game. There's really no way to recover. You know, with dragoons, the damage is much more elastic mm -hmm. because you can control it, you can you can tighten them and try to shoot down those units as they pursue you. In this case, it looks like MC is about to get hard locked out of coming out of this game. Yeah, he's looking kind of dead. And honestly, even though Parting sent a lot of Zealots through and is continuing to make them, sending them up to 12 o'clock, Rain held his rush. So Parting has to get a ton done right now, or he is going to be in trouble. Uh, he sends up these Zealots into 12, and look at that, he's getting the mineral line, but great micro all over the place. Everyone just drilling probes onto the Zealots. Yeah, again, the Dragoons, as long as you get enough of them, they are better than the Zealots. And now we're going to see our player at 3 o'clock get eliminated as all of these Zealots come in here and storm down the few probes that are in the one Dragoon, I should say, that are here to defend. But again, uh, this is getting to be a very scrappy game. We have one player that looks like he won't have an economy. I love this, by the way. <laughs> the, uh, the attempted wall to trap some of these Dragoons in here while this fight continues. Yeah, it's really all up to parting now. But with this many Dragoons in his base and no units there to help defend, he is in a tough spot. It looks like right now it's just Dragoons microing frantically against Zalots is the name of the game. Now the probes are coming up here. Oh, that's going to be it. There we go. GG, MC and Party <laughs> tapping out in what I got to say was a really exciting game. A 2v2 in StarCraft 1 oftentimes is quite short. It really is so much about control mm -hmm. and very sharp decision making. If you're able to tech at the right time mm -hmm. and control that, you can win. And we saw that back there. Yeah, it looked for a moment like these StarCraft 2 players would actually maybe be able to upset the StarCraft 1 players there. Uh, but Rain's control a bit too strong. He got those Dragoons out, and when you have those Dragoons, nothing's really going to hit them when Rain is behind the wheel. It's a funny thing in PvP um, that it happens in StarCraft, or I should say 1v1 that you can have in 2v2, is that if you get your Dragoons out and survive a Zealot Rush, you're usually in a better position, and since mm -hmm. all the races were Protoss there, that's kind of what we got. Yeah. Uh, so there you go. We have a point on the board for Team StarCraft 1, but the game was StarCraft 1. It's time to get into StarCraft 2. Let's get it started. 
Okay, and it looks like our next game is starting. We're ready to go now into StarCraft 2 instead of StarCraft 1. That's right. Uh, we did have the StarCraft 1 Legends beat the StarCraft 2 Legends in StarCraft 1. Can they pay them back in their own game? It's time to start. So um, our game is ready to go. And it looks like our game is ready now. So we're going to be going into this match. Again, same players, all Protoss here. Mm -hmm. But I think our StarCraft II players are going to perform a little bit better. Granted, it, oh, is, sure. it is Lost Temple, so you are disjointed. There are forms of StarCraft II where you actually start out right next to your uh, opponent. But mm -hmm. in this case, uh, there's going to be some of the same themes here from our previous game. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, likely going to be a lot of early game units because you do get so many, but StarCraft II is a very different game, right? You can actually, in 2 vs. 2, trade resources right. in StarCraft II. You can control each other's units a lot of the time as well. Uh, so it's hard to say exactly how they're going to approach it, but interestingly enough, I'm looking at this, right? And we have the players that are uh, full-time StarCraft II guys, uh, or at least were in MC's case, uh, going ahead and making their gateways at the ramp, whereas the gates are being made near the nexuses for Team StarCraft 1, which maybe won't be the, the right way to do it. This is so funny because it really shows the that ingrained habits of mm -hmm. each uh, of the experts in each of the games. Uh, obviously, in StarCraft 2, you want to have the gateway at the ramp. You want to start mm -hmm. to try to do Wallens early on, almost like you're a Terran in StarCraft 1. But in this case, we have our StarCraft uh, 1 players behaving, at least build order placement-wise, yeah. like they're in a StarCraft uh, 1 game. Yeah, that makes it a, a little bit worrisome for them. I do wonder if we're going to just get up to Adepts and have those just shade right through and, and kill all the probes. But we'll see about that. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of interesting we have... By the way, just to let you know where the players are, 12 o'clock is Rain, 9 o'clock is Stork, 3 o'clock is Parting, and 6 o'clock is MC. So the teams are on the same sides, but their actual positions are switched from the previous game. So in this game, you can absolutely uh, have a short one. It could go to a long game, but um, the truth is, I just feel like when you don't have a, a wall in mm -hmm. like that at your entrance, you're inviting a lot of attacks. And, yeah. and it, two players attacking you, at the same time is obviously devastating, especially mm -hmm. if your ally can't get there in time. Another thing we want to watch for as well is uh, what tech paths are chosen and how hard will they tech. Because when you are building up your tech tree in a StarCraft 2, 2v2, you are neglecting some of those core units mm -hmm. that would be for mm -hmm. fighting early on. Now, we actually have uh, Adepts coming out first for both of the StarCraft 2 players, and that really kind of shows that they know exactly what they're doing. Just what we were talking about before, yeah. the Adepts could be completely deadly this game. I don't know how you're going to be able to block four to eight Adepts unless you have a full wall at your ramp. Yeah, I, I could not agree more. Now we've got... Uh, some of these adepts already shading over here. It looks like into 12 o'clock. We're just now catching this on camera here. Now, two adepts can one-shot a probe, and you don't have a lot of probes early on, so this is economically devastating to, uh, to deal with at the start of a game. Yeah, he is dealing a ton of damage right there. A lot of probes end up falling here for Rain. He is in some trouble, but he does have those stalkers. He loves those stalkers and pushes them back for now. So he does have a slightly stronger army, but took a big bruise to his economy. Now a lot more adepts shading forward, going towards that mineral line. Okay, these adepts coming in now. And again, this is such a devastating amount of damage. It is worthwhile to trade those adepts off mm. to kill the workers. Um, it is possible to get hard locked out of producing workers uh, for a little bit, unless your uh, you know, excuse me, unless your teammate can mm -hmm. send you resources, but then you're draining them as well. Yeah, that's really rough. He kills off some of the adepts, pushes them out, but how many probes does he even have left here? Four or five? He's taken a huge amount of damage. Yeah, he's now has less probes than he started with mm -hmm. in the game, which is crazy to think about, but. Uh, over here in the south, we're getting some pretty impressive tech. So we've had adepts come in here and really punish um, rain over at 12 o'clock. But uh, from here, we have a lot of stalkers in the game. But I think one of the most significant units we're going to have in general 
uh, in this 2v2 is going to be the Immortals, which we see mm. being made down here at 6 o'clock for MC. The Immortal versus anything that's not an air unit is very strong. It's a very well-rounded unit, mm. and that can easily curb a fight. Oh, certainly. And now, oh my gosh, Parting flies in with an Oracle over here to Stork's base, killing a lot more probes. The amount of economic damage dealt from the StarCraft 2 players to the StarCraft 1 players is immense. They are so far ahead right now. It's funny because our first 2v2 was actually quite close. It was pretty dramatic, but this is absolute domination here from the StarCraft 2 pros. That's right. Look at that. No probes left over. He's got one probe mining. So he knocked down one of the players to four probes, the other one to one probe. I mean, that's just about it. GG is called. Yeah, wow. And, yeah. <laughs> they just tap out. Very impressive game there. And we're seeing the StarCraft II players assert themselves, dominating MC and Parting with the victory. Up next with our StarCraft Legends team matches, MVP and ST versus Last and Effort. This is going to be a really exciting StarCraft 1, 2 vs 2. And part of the reason for that is, of course, MVP and ST, they were StarCraft 1 pros, but very specifically, Nest T was a 2 vs 2 pro. He played a lot of 2 vs 2 matches during his career. That's right. Zerg was one of the essential races you almost always had to have in a 2v2. Mm -hmm. And he was uh, one of the best, if not the best, Zerg players in a team game. So I'm very excited to see him play this MVP there's a million reasons to be hyped for this guy. <laughs> oh, of course. MVP still talked about to this day as one of the greatest of all time. He has a ridiculous amount of championships under his belt. And of course, Nesty, the Zerg equivalent to MVP. These two were just giant dominators in the beginning of StarCraft II. And of course, on the other side, we have Last and Effort. Now, Last in recent times has been a true hero for aspiring StarCraft 1 pros. Mm -hmm. Recently, he's had so much success. Yeah, he's won an ASL, he's won a KSL, and honestly, he had a, a short but strong career in StarCraft 2 also, so it'll be cool to see him play some of that again today. And then, of course, Effort. Uh, this guy is one of the most legendary Zerg players of all time and the only player that actually beats Flash in best of fives. And at TVZ is, or I should say Terran and Zerg is a very common 2v2 team to have here. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a Terran Zerg versus a Terran Zerg. Should be very exciting. And it looks like our game is ready to go. Let's get this started. So our map going to be Lost Temple here once again. We see last over here at the 9 o'clock position. A great Terran player, multiple championships for him. And his teammate is actually going to be over at 3 o'clock. So cross map, it's going to be effort. Yeah, this is... This is, oh, we have some conversations here, actually, with our players. <laughs> One hatch mute, as he says. I love it. Uh, but, yeah, we have MVP up at 12 o'clock, and we have Nest T down at 6 o'clock. Oh, man, this is going to be really fun to see what these guys actually come up with. One thing about um, early Zerg units and early Terran units is that they're very brittle. Mm -hmm. uh, this will be quite different from our first 2v2 that we casted here where they were all Protoss. The Protoss Tier 1 units especially are very meaty. Mm -hmm. They can take damage, and you can a lot of times force situations. Here, any miscontrol on either side, and it can be very, very explosive. Mm -hmm. You can lose everything immediately. Right now, Last is sending out a very early SCV here. It looks like he might be going for like a, a, a proxy barracks play. Not entirely sure. Going to send this SCV up. Oh, Whoa. wow, look at that. A proxy barracks right outside the main base of MVP. This is so cool. You know, depending on how the Zerg plays, Terran is generally the most vulnerable race mm -hmm. in StarCraft 1, unless the other races are doing something very risky. In a 2v2, uh, I think one of the ideas we're going to see here is Marine pressure uh, into Ling pressure to try to wipe out the Terran player early on. And mm -hmm. from there, they can then try to gang up on the other Zerg player on the other side of the map and win in a two versus one. But look at this. He comes out and actually scouts what Last is doing right away. Oh, this is a huge find for him. If he could prevent that barracks from finishing, then this game is going to be heavily favored for our Team StarCraft 2. Yeah, and if you, again, even with this barracks being spotted, it looks like it will barely finish! Ooh. 
smash! It does. Oh, beautifully done. But SCVs can actually fight against Marines in StarCraft 1. And with three of them out there, it's going to be hard to really put damage out. The uh, units will always spawn at the bottom left side of the structure. You can So you can see a small triangle of SCVs ready to catch that. Ooh. But immediately the Marine escapes, the barracks lifts. Also, a lifted barracks can be blocked by SCVs underneath mm -hmm. it or Zerglings or anything else. So I, I worry a little bit here. Um, about our Terran player in the middle of the map and how exactly this is going to be controlled. Well, a lot of Lings coming out from Nest T down at the bottom, coming up to help a bit. Uh, Lings are here as well from Effort, but they're not going to be able to actually do any damage to MVP. He's already got a bunker up at his wall in. Instead, it looks like Nest T might go and attack last, who we know just can't really have units at home since his barracks is across the map. The aggressive barracks play early on is completely backfiring, as far as I can tell here, for last. Last with a naked main here. Mm -hmm. Ling's coming in right now, which are very strong at fighting SCVs if controlled correctly. Oh, man, these Ling's coming in. This is going to be very difficult for him to hold on. Nesty's micro should be true here. Uh, going to go ahead and dodge some of these SCVs. Look at this. He's got no units to help out. More Ling's are coming in. Keep in mind, Ling's speed is finished on both sides. And it looks like some of Nesty's Zerglings are going to get trapped over here. Beautifully done. Yeah, that was a nice catch. But in the meantime, Effort actually lost an Overlord. So that's a little bit painful. He is supply blocked. What you see is what you get for now. I actually got to say, this is a pretty incredible save here mm -hmm. by our blue team to keep the Terran alive here. The factory is going to finish. A Vulture is incredibly strong against Zerglings and also pretty good against Marines as well. Mm -hmm. So to be able to survive in that next tech jump is, hu is huge. But MVP on the red team is also getting his factory up as well. Yeah. Uh, you know what? Nest T, by the way, when he was saying before that he wanted one hatch Muta, he was not joking. That Spire is almost halfway done, Tasteless. And that is something that's going to cause some pain because how many units do they have that shoot up? Almost none. You're completely right. Um, we could maybe see Terran tech into Goliaths here. The problem mm. with Goliaths is that they struggle when fighting both air and ground units. Mm -hmm. Well, right now, uh, double Starport Wraith coming up also. Nest T and MVP, I do like their position. There's a lot of Lings out here from Effort, but he's keeping him kind of busy. I mean, Effort can clearly kill all of these Lings, but if he's chasing them around, that gives time for the flying units to come out. That's very true, and now we have these Lings coming in here. Uh, Effort's Lings now chasing away the Lings of Nest T. Uh, I do like the the tech up here into the wraiths because this can be so strong if mm -hmm. controlled correctly. Vulture's now coming into play here for uh, last, but it does seem like last is in tech-wise the most difficult spot. Yeah, it, it, it is going to be rough for him. Uh, now, he does have some vultures out on the map, so he can start to dominate some zerglings, but is he going to have enough to actually hold on against those mutas coming? I don't know. If he can repair the bunker as well as the vulture, this will be a solid hold here. These lings will be useless. We're now into the air game here. Nesty flying in, beginning to damage these SCVs. Will the Goliaths be able to come out in time? I'm not so sure. Yeah, he does have that finished armory, so hopefully has some Goliaths popping out pretty soon. Two Goliaths can push back three Mutalisks, so that's going to be helpful. A few lings coming in as well, but they're already low on health. He's going to clean those up and he is going to save himself with those Goliaths. A huge flood of Lings here from Effort coming towards Nesty's base, pulling those Mutalists away. Now, drones, when covered correctly, can protect the Sunken Colony, but I think this Ling number may be so mm. high, we're not going to have that many drones left in this game. Meanwhile, MVP uh, combing the map with his Wraiths to try to kill off as many Overlords as possible. Yeah, there is a Spore here that will save his Mineral Lion at least somewhat, but with Mutas being made as well as two Port Wraith, the overall Air Army is getting extremely strong for Nesty and MVP. You can see now um, these Wraiths really chipping away here at Effort in this position. It is Nesty that has the Mutas out. Mutas uh, combo with Wraiths are probably going to keep these two players uh, I'm talking about last and effort in this case, mm -hmm. separated from each other. And if you're yeah. separated and isolated, you're very li uh, likely to lose a two versus two. It really looks that way. Look at effort supply. Nine of 
two. That means he only his hatcheries are giving him supply right now. He has to save up for overlords, which will then be picked off. Really, this feels like Last is playing a one versus two right now. That's right, and keep in mind, you can always fly in there and kill those overlords off again mm -hmm. and again and again. And with that kind of production gridlock, it's possible you're never able to come back. No, this is very tough for Effort. He does have a second spore up. He's finally getting some overlords out to refill that supply. Sure, Nesty has taken some damage down at six o'clock, but is, is Last going to be able to make enough Goliaths to fight against two players until Effort recovers? I, I guess that's the big question. Keep in mind, uh, nobody has an expansion over here. I would say a one-base Terran powering a lot of Goliaths. I love this Vulture, by the way. <laughs> Every drone is so precious right now. Mm -hmm. A one-base Terran powering Goliaths, that's, I think, still difficult against Wraith and Muta, but Goliaths do counter Wraiths and Mutalisks. So if you get the right fight in the sure. right place at the right time, a big maybe. Mm. <laughs> a big maybe. A big, strong and maybe. it's not no just a, a maybe like all caps locked. It's like a maybe with a question mark behind it. Maybe even two question marks. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> two question marks and two dots behind it. <laughs> yeah. Right now, the rates of MVP dealing some harassment damage. Get rid of that geyser. So no more gas for effort. He's going after the spawning pool as well. Effort has just been a punching bag for these two. But sometimes that's what 2v2 is in StarCraft mm -hmm. 1, especially for the Zerg. Uh, it's to try to hang on, to try to buy time, and come up with some kind of solution. Now, we have the Goliaths of last heading southbound mm. here. They are going to try to close in on this base that we're getting a shot of right here. And I do want to point out the Wraiths are far, far away from home. Yeah, even if they come down, Wraiths are pretty weak against Goliaths, that's for sure. Now, the Muta's trying to do some counter harassment, but it looks like Last is looking pretty solid. Ooh, MVP sending down some siege tanks as well now. And if we get a really good surround over here on this uh, layer, you can gun down the Sunka colonies, you can fire at the Mutas, and you can also pick off that key structure, uh, the layer, which allows you to just mm. get any resources. Killing that will lock <laughs> Nesty out of this game. And look at this, MVP saying, you know what? I'm just gonna end the Zerg. He's just going to go ahead and try to kill Effort because he sees that Nesty is basically dead. So the Terran player's going to eliminate the Zergs. Um, and from here, I guess we're going to end up with a Terran versus Terran on some level. Um, we're seeing that that Siege Tank was in range of the Sunken mm -hmm. Colony, one of the more grave errors you can make in a game like this. Now, Nesty has saved one drone, but the Observer's showing us he does not have 300 mm -hmm. minerals, so Nesty can no longer produce this game. And it's going to be up to Nesty's Mutas and everything else that MVP has to try to eliminate effort in this race. Are they going to be able to kill effort off? And if so, is that going to be enough to give them victory. It looks like the only expansion taken this game is MVPs up at 12 o'clock. So he is gonna have the bigger economy, but last, a really strong StarCraft 1 player. Maybe he can come back in the spawn. The tank's been picked off. Uh, oh, but there's, oh, there's one sunken colony just underneath mm. the Overlord. So you can't just run in there and start killing drones. And you know, effort has played a key role in this game. Uh, it can be confusing to the passive observer where it might look like he was just defending, um, but being a battery of that damage and staying alive and being mm -hmm. a possible mm -hmm. threat later on is key. And I think we are close to having um, our blue team end up with a uh, defeating our red team here. If we can just get enough uh, a back here for the Zerg, it's very mm. hard to play a 2v1. It is really hard, but it's MVP. He's, he's one of the GOATs, right? And he was a very strong StarCraft 1 pro as well, so he knows what he's doing here. He does have a bigger economy, but yeah, look at this. Nesty, almost nothing left over. Just a couple buildings he's going to get eliminated, it looks like here. Uh, a couple drones out on the map, but the only thing he could really build would be a gas somewhere. Here we go. Is he going to get this up in time? Oh! oh. Yeah, he'll get it there. <laughs> now, keep in mind, it's not like uh, he needs to be in the game, but if you're in the game, you can move overlords. Mm -hmm. you, can, you can try to micro maybe the one or two mutas you have here. It's something. Uh, and again, it, it should be emphasized that even a few units... Uh, by the yeah. player that's basically dead. Doing something can be helpful in the end here. But right now, again, this is a two versus one. We have the Mutas now covering the tanks mm -hmm. as we're having effort slowly build up into a Zerg that will eventually take a base. And meanwhile, mm -hmm. uh, it's MVP with the five factories coming down here. 
this is still a really interesting game. Yeah, yeah, there's no real tech for effort. It's not like he has mutas or something. It looks like Nesty is probably going to get eliminated at this point. He throws his mutas in for one final scout of effort space. And you know what? It shows that there's no real tech. So he was really useful till the last moments. Some great team play there from Nesty, kind of sacrificing himself and turning off his camera. Uh, in the meantime, yeah, it's turning into a Terran versus Terran and Zerg. Yeah, and I think the question right now is, how are you going to bust this? Uh, it looks like we're actually going to have them try to come out. I meant a bust to contain, but I guess they're going to go for an actual attack over here onto the entrance. Mm. Pretty bold move here. I think he's going to maybe hold on, though, to be honest. That was beautiful. He had a, a nice spread of siege tanks, and that barracks sucked up a lot of attacks from the Goliaths. So a little bit of a sloppy bust from last, and MVP holds on. Beautifully done. MVP still in this game, but uh, a Terran with good cover can contain uh, uh, another Terran player. So we're going to have to see if MVP could try to break out here because a contained Terran is never going to be able to get control of the map, and that will allow the Zerg to get out of control. So now we have these SCVs and the tanks coming down here, planting mines. And I don't think that there's enough here for last if they're trying to defend this position. Oh, this is huge if he actually breaks through, but hold on. Lings from Effort coming up. Don't forget there's another player in this game trying to surround the tanks. He does get a pick off right there. Going to end up losing the rest of these Lings, but no, he kills another tank as well. A huge effort there from the Zerg player. And in kind of a crazy game here, it looks like barely they're going to be able to <laughs> contain and curb the progress there of MVP. GG, what a game. Yeah, that was a really nice one. Very, very close. I like the ideas out of MVP and ST, and they almost took them out. Up next, we're going to go to our StarCraft 2, two versus two match, of course, with the same teams we just had in our previous game. MVP and ST versus Last and Effort. All right. Uh, I wonder if they're going to do a bit better than we saw uh, from the StarCraft 1 players in the last StarCraft 2, uh, two versus two because that was pretty one-sided, right? They just died instantly to the adepts. It looks like our game is ready. We're gonna go ahead and hop into this in our fourth 2v2 here at BlizzCon Line. In this case, we have our blue team here on the bottom right mm -hmm. and our red team here sharing the upper left. Yeah, so we have effort over at three o'clock and last down at six, as we already saw. Up at 12, we have Nesty. And over at nine, we have MVP. So this should be kind of interesting to see how they want to go about it. Uh, definitely very different than the double Protoss versus double Protoss that we saw before. It, this is not something that you're just going to win by, you know, shading in a bunch of adapts and killing your opponent's workers. Uh, I think they're both going to be a bit more prepared. And I could see this being relatively close. I'm interested to see how this is going to be handled. Again, this is on the classic StarCraft map, Lost Temple. Um, but you're not sharing spawns like there is in StarCraft 2, a two versus two. But you can, of course, share resources. So there are ways to come back. As mm -hmm. an example, in that last game, we did see Nest T save a drone, and he was unable to make a hatchery because he didn't have enough minerals. Mm -hmm. In a game like this, mm -hmm. if we have a similar situation, you could send Nest T minerals, and he could restart from there. Yeah, that's, that's actually a really good point, right? If you're only a few minerals off, then suddenly you can change the game around. Uh, you know, StarCraft II is definitely a game where you can get a bit more mobile early on as Terran as well. Like That's a right. lot of players will like to go for Reapers, for instance, uh, which of course are very fast. They can kite against all sorts of different units. And we'll see if that's the kind of uh, direction they want to go in. But in that in that case, it's going to be a lot harder to uh, kill your op opponents, right? Because they can actually come up and help a bit more. I like what you said about Terran being a little bit more viable in the early part of a StarCraft uh, to match. The Marines mm. are a little bit better. StarCraft 1 Marines are good when you get a certain amount of them. Sure. But um, definitely in this case, it should be a different game. Now we're seeing a Banelings Nest come <laughs> down here. Uh, Banelings are already critical if you're going to one base. You need to make sure they correct to connect, I should say, perfectly. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you what, man, when you're on against two players, every Baneling has to connect to its target. 
Yeah, but look, there's a rush going down right now. MVP and Nesty sending links, sending Marines, trying to get a bunker up right now. Some additional links from effort coming down and actually getting a nice surround there, trying to reduce the Marine count, which I think is absolutely critical because of that bunker. Beautifully done there. The Banelings nest over here for Nesty about to finish up. But for now, there's this bunker in kind of an odd spot on the low ground. This Marine not on the inside, and it's inside pretty quickly. <laughs> Barely does manage to do so. But on the high ground, this bunker is about to finish, mm. and this is certainly going to be something easy to reinforce. It's hard to imagine. Well, I say that, but then we're just Banelings <laughs> finishing. I'm really getting to see the idea of this strategy. The Banelings could come up here mm -hmm. and just tear open this entrance. That's going to be hard to deal with. Yeah, they definitely will tear it open, too. The bunker goes down. The reactor goes down. It has the depot killed as well. Very few units left over here for last, and the Speedlings of Nest T getting into his mineral line. And now taking this much damage early on, going to be very difficult to ever imagine somebody recovering from this. I mean, yeah, sure, you can lift your command center off, try to go somewhere else, but really, this is so much damage so quickly, it does seem like the other team can now two versus mm. one and overpower in somewhat of a similar fashion that we saw in our previous game. Yeah, a lot of damage dealt, but now effort roaming the map with a big group of roaches. And honestly, looking at that unit tab, these roaches beat everything that's on the map right now. Yeah, these roaches are really the muscle on the map that can't quite be dealt with. I mean, this is one of the things about when two players gang up on, a, on one player early on. If that other player doesn't do everything to try to save them, mm -hmm. they will at least have a much more powerful tech, a stronger army. Yeah. And sometimes we see games swing after that. Yeah, we're going to see if that swings now because he is walking across the map with a lot of roaches. Some spines going up for an ST at 12 o'clock. Let's see if he can end up holding on. Yeah, I think he'll be able to, right? That's a lot of lings. He has a couple queens. The spines are going to finish. I don't think Effort can get him. This is a great block up here. Anything to buy a little bit of time. Now, keep in mind, our Terran in the blue is not out of the game just yet. If he can get a few more mules down, make a few more SCDs, he might be able to squeeze through. But over here at Nesty's base, these roaches coming through here, taking the queen out. Uh, or I should say almost taking the queen out. Now going for these spines here. And it looks like effort will be pushed back. The Marines coming up, trying to pick off the few roaches that are running away. Uh, good micro there from effort, getting the maximum value out of those roaches before they fall. Yeah, this is some incredible play here. And right now, a lot of players are limping through this game yeah. here. We have um, our red Terran and our blue Zerg with muscle, with the ability to fight on the map. The other two players are trying to recover and catch back up. Here we have the Banshee coming in here. Mm. No real easy retaliation from anywhere to try to stop this thing. No, two star part Banshee looked like it was a great idea here from MVP. He's going to have Cloak, which is going to make it even more powerful. It looks like he's got enough at this point to maybe take everyone else out of this game. Yeah, the, the fact of the matter is that there's no easy response to the Banshee, especially if they're mm -hmm. coming out in pairs. And as the last SCVs are falling, here this is very quickly becoming a two versus one but nesty in a bit of trouble at last sending up a couple hellions before he's out of this game to deal some additional damage here effort with the roaches as well he's going to be able to get on top of those drones so this could turn into a one versus one but mvp with this many banshees seems really favored mvp coming in here and beginning to hammer that expansion there in the center right and that is huge. Nest T uh, pulling his drones out here as the Hellions Ooh. beat them. The Terrans still in this game doing quite a bit of damage. These Banshees really going to town as well, taking out some Queens. Transfusion's going down. Good micro again by effort while he kills off Nest T. But the Banshees, like, there's no answer. What are you going to do? You walk your spore forward? Yeah, there's just not any easy response to this, is there? Another Queen pops out. Maybe this will buy a little bit of time. But again, right now, so many players battered and bruised here. 12 o'clock is almost completely wiped out. Uh, our Terran at 6, I'm not sure. <laughs> I think he has maybe one or two yeah, very SCVs <laughs> mining there, but certainly not enough to be really, very active in this game. But the real story, again, is these Banshees just doing mm -hmm. so much damage without any easy way to respond here for Effort. Oh, Effort is just taking massive economic hits here left and right. He's trying to make more spores to stop those Banshees. It's not working out so well. Queen does pop out to help a little bit. Cancels that spore right before it dies as well. But the damage is being dealt everywhere by MVP. 
I love the Roach counterattack, though, here from Effort. A Banshee will eventually kill mm. all these Roaches, but not before these Roaches might kill every SCV in this bait. Yeah, they definitely could, but with two Banshees attacking, the SCV is stopping them from walking up any further. It looks like that will be cleaned up. In the meantime, the Banshee harassment at Effort's base has finally been put down, but MVP continues to produce. So much damage uh, dealt over here, but I would say that as the dust settles, there's going to be enough SCVs here for MVP to be a real threat. His Banshee production has not been slowed down at all. Mm -hmm. He is uh, continuing to throw those out for more and more damage. Oh, a couple of mines just go and burrow under them. Just barely can't lock on on time. Running up here now. And again, two Banshees can easily target fire mm -hmm. down one mine. So once you zone out that mine, the mine has to unbrow and try to attack it somewhere else. And both of our blue players are just a few Banshee shots away from losing <laughs> key things that will keep them in this game. In this case over here for effort, it's going to be the hatchery. If the yeah. hatchery's knocked out, you cannot mine anymore. Both of them at below 10% HP. Oh my gosh, he's gonna get the one in the main base. Uh, luckily, there is still one at the natural for effort to mine from. But MVP starting to produce even more units. We see some Marauders coming out. He's got an expansion down. I tell you what, MVP might not really save you from being killed in ST, but I, he looks really good when he gets going. The Banshee's going to come in here once more, and this is the same number of Banshees as there are Queens here. I don't see a <laughs> Widow Mine up here to defend, and this is the only point that is gathering resources in any realistic fashion. I know we mm -hmm. still have a Command Center in the game, but there's not that many workers. Uh, and it's going to be Banshee versus Queen as that Banshee is then kited away. Ooh, a good micro again. Uh, pulls back that queen. Some good transfusions also. Uh, he is morphing a lair, which will add some health back on right. that hatchery. It'll open up some more tech roots for him also. Uh, but the, the Banshees continue to retain control of this game. The Banshees coming down now. Firing away at this hatchery once more. We need to see some transfusions to come down here. But that's not going to be enough. Um, there is one more hatchery being made now over in the main, but it is only halfway complete. The Banshees, again, eating damage from diving on top of that hatchery. But uh, again, I don't know that these Banshees can be stopped. We have infantry now coming in here to mm. reinforce, and it seems like we are at the beginning of the end. No, we are at the end. GG, beautifully done there by MVP to close that out. Yeah, yeah, and I think Nesty obviously very useful this game as well. He did do that Baneling bus, which allowed a lot of damage to happen to last. But well done, and Team StarCraft II takes both of the StarCraft II, two versus twos. What an incredible uh, set of games that we've had so far here. 2v2, uh, once you get past 1v1, 2v2 is the most competitive and fun version of StarCraft I think you can get. Mm -hmm. And we saw how dynamic it can be. It looks like it's going to go one way because one player is dead, but then another player strong enough to come back and try to punish. I really like how that went. Yeah. Now we're going to amp it up, everybody. <laughs> no more 2v2s. Two week. Now we're going to 3v3s. We're going to have one player representing each race on the map. Big Game Hunters. Or known as BGH. This is one of the most popular maps ever in the history of StarCraft. Everyone's played BGH, right? That's right. And if you were one of those diehard BGH players, you weren't pro probably were not playing with Artosis and me. <laughs> At no. least not in the early days. No, to be, the truth be told, I did start out on BGH like many other yeah. players. But yeah. this is a great map, especially for beginners, because you don't have to focus as much on expanding. Mm -hmm. But it's also really fun to see what happens when you put pros on it, especially in a team game. Our game is ready to start. We're going to go right into this. And... I got to point out, even though this is a map we tend to think of where players are mining constantly and it's going to be huge, the reality is you can also rush each other. Mm -hmm. Nobody's going to stop you from rushing. This is not a no-rush 20-minute yeah. BGH. Well, it is three versus three. We'll see more about that. We just saw in the top left, we have MVP in the top center. We have Nest T. And over there at 9 o'clock, we have MC. So they're all kind of towards the top left of the map. In the top right, we have Effort. In the bottom right, we have Rain. 
And in the bottom left, we have last. So our StarCraft 1 players are all very split up from each other. Uh, but really, I think one of the big stories here is Nesty and MVP are right next to each other. They are as close as you can get on big game hunters. That's right. Also, another thing to keep in mind is that uh, th th this map is not uh, shaped perfectly, depending on the version that we're on here. <laughs> so there are certain positions that are better than others. For instance, where this SUV is, if you were to go just a screen north mm -hmm. of that, tanks can hit the mineral patches oh, with yeah. that expansion. Again, if expansions come into play, mm -hmm. uh, there is no rule that says at this level of play that you can't rush each other, even though we tend to think of this as a map where, you know, there's going to be a Protoss with 12 carriers and an Arbiter. Yeah, and Terrence yeah. going to have <laughs> battle cruisers and Zerg's going Guardians and Devourers. It could be an action-packed game still. No, you're, you're definitely right about that. And I think... I think that's probably how it's going to go down as well. While a lot of the uh, lay people that play on this map are going to be able to tech up and, and get to some really late game cool armies. When you have pro gamers on each side, I mean, if everyone just optimizes and makes a bunch of early game units and hits one player, you're gonna almost kill them before his teammates get there to help. That's right. So we're seeing two gateways thrown down here from our Protoss. Um, I guess I'll cross the map here. It looks like it's going to be Zerglings with speed immediately as well. This is uh, among the most common Zerg openings in 2v2. Mm -hmm. um, of course, Zerglings probably the best unit realistically in the game. Yeah, It's hard to tech up in any team game for the Zerg. The highest tech you tend to see is Mutalisks. Um, and they usually stay on that for a long time after mm -hmm. that. But getting Link speed right away is a very strong play for sure. Oh, yeah. He's going to be able to help his teammates as well as attack with these very, very quickly. And that is going to be important. Now, all three StarCraft 1 players really making a lot of units. Uh, Rain is going to Gateway Zealot. We have a Barracks uh, in a forward position here for last, adding some Marines in. Ooh, he even picks off that uh, that making SCV, but also, of course, those speedlings, as you mentioned, from effort. This barracks here is very important. It can help with the wall off, but it is there then denied. A probe, an SCV, Marines, and Zerglings <laughs> putting pressure over here to our player at 12 o'clock. This Marine needs to get behind. Uh, and now a bunker is going to go down there. This mm. is going to isolate the Zerg, and this could be a very scary moment here. MVP going to try to come in now and help defend. Oh, but the Lings actually all die. Nesty losing a lot of his units before anything else is there to help. MVP bringing a lot of SCVs down. We also have a random Zealot mixed in here from MC that's worked his way up. And, it, I mean, I guess they're going to be able to stop the bunker from going up at least, but he's lost a lot of his SCVs. Yeah, this is a lot of damage to be taking right away. MVP going to pull away. Was this an overextension here from our blue team? It may be the case. Ooh, some damage being dealt as well as effort runs around with some harassment. Last, going to have to pull back with his Marines. MC giving chase. Uh, and we see Rain in the bottom right starting to tech up to those Dragoons he loves so much. Okay, nobody taking too much economic damage. That's the most important mm -hmm. thing to take away for now, but the counterplay here from the red team is very strong. The fact that there is this barracks out here for last in a far out location mm -hmm. means that can be forced to lift and therefore Marines can be denied from production. Yeah, he's made a bunker, so he's going to try to protect himself with that. In the meantime, uh, actually hunting down some of these uh, Zerglings from effort Looks like MVP fielding quite a few Marines to go with the Zealots of MC. And this is some pretty incredible pressure we're seeing. You saw MVP telling everybody, go bottom right, push now. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing that down here, there's not really that much to defend. I mean, the Zealots, if they're on the outside, they're going to be outnumbered. If they're behind the gateways, the gateway production is going to mm -hmm. fall here. And really, you know, between a hard rock and a, and, a, and a cliff, there's no good way to go about doing this, man. Both ways to handle this mm -hmm. suck. And we're going to see uh, MC in a very, very uh, good spot here because he's yeah. going to crush through the rest of these Zealots of Rain. Well, just with those Marines pelting them from behind, you're going to kill the Zealots so, so quickly. They put out a lot of damage. The pylon goes down. So now the gate's unpowered. It looks like Team StarCraft 2 going to push forward into Rain's base. Yeah, this is going to get pretty bad quit pretty quickly. Um, and again, with the Marines here and Zealots and Lynx to cover it, 
There's no real easy way here for Rain to try to defend. I love the Vulture coming down here, mm -hmm. also doing damage to MC, but the real story is what's happening here at the bottom right side of the map. Some great micro coming down. Effort getting his speedlings on top of those Marines. Not going to be a lot of Marines left over, but six kills with that Vulture. Last getting a lot done with a little over here in MC's base. And from now, uh, with Rain, I mean, taking so much damage down there in the bottom right, um, he has workers, he can begin to recover, but it may be blow after blow after blow as this mm -hmm. game continues on. You can see the rallying of units here in the red with their targets set on the weakest player, Rain, in the bottom right. Yeah, but look at this, the Vultures joining in. These Vultures theoretically can kill everything with the right micro. So we'll see if Last can really be the hero of his team. That's right. Uh, you know, the Vultures are very strong, but they're also very brittle units. They really are glass cannons. So if they're not controlled correctly, they can be killed by anything as well. But the gateway's up here getting denied once more as we see our red team diving on top of that pylon. Ooh, yeah, they are going to unpower those gateways once again, but Effort bringing down a lot of wings to help out this time. Looks like it will be a, a cleanup of these Zealots of MC. Okay, uh, the fight continues on down here. Sometimes it looks like one player could be getting beaten up, and that's going to cost him the game. Sometimes it's actually the opposite. Mm. The fact that you hung on means your teammates can power up enough. They can really do damage. I love the Ling play here by Nesty. He's mm. absolutely got the right idea. Attacking right where the Vultures come out and stopping them before they can get numbers that are going to be mm. too huge. Now look at this. He's actually sacrificing his Lings to stop the Spider Mine upgrade. What a nice move. Mines would absolutely rip this game open uh, for Team StarCraft 1, but Team StarCraft 2 looking pretty darn strong. Look at this. Trying to hold on. They have this beautifully placed bunker. And ST with the endless Ling Flood keeping everything out. You're really seeing why uh, Nesty was the MVP in 2 versus 2. Denying that upgrade mm. and then denying the Vulture push at the top. Two critical moments in this fight. Absolutely the case. Now, Rain out on the map with some of his Dragoons, but looks like MC has more. Don't forget, MC is kind of out there on his own. He might be the player that they want to attack. This is a, a crazy moment here in the middle of the map. Now, Dragoons beat Vultures. Now, Vulture Mines can beat Dragoons, mm. but Ling's together with Vultures absolutely <laughs> smashing Dragoons, and we're seeing why. Yeah. The add-on's going to be added back in here, so even though Mines were denied, they're going to be a reality very soon. I am feeling a little bit nervous here for uh, for Team StarCraft 2. They had a great opening, but now our StarCraft 1 players have map control. They're controlling that center, which means MC can't come up to help very quickly, right? He sees these units come up. He can send units now, but he's going to be late to the party. Okay, a big push coming through here. There is a bunker. There are SCVs to help defend here, but this is a lot of units. The Lings have done their job. They've eaten the damage. The Vultures are going to spill through here now, mm. and Nesty has nothing to defend that. He lost all of his Lings trying to hold on there at the front. In the meantime, MVP is holding on with mass repair in the bunker, but a lot of drones falling for Nesty. He is down to five supply. Yeah, and I don't see any workers on the screen mm -hmm. right now. It's going to be a long <laughs> climb to get back into this game. Uh, obviously, Rain took a lot of damage early on, but that doesn't compare to the damage that Nesty just dealt with back there. Well, he's at zero supply, literally, with 97 minerals. So he can make, like, a drone to start coming back. But Nesty is effectively out of this game, other than his overlords flying around. And remember, you can't share resources in StarCraft 1. So if they mm -hmm. dive in there again and kill the drone, he may be hard locked out of any economic play. Yeah. Meanwhile, we see these wraiths come in here and doing a lot of damage over here to efforts, workers. Uh, it's going to be some time, though, before they can truly kill everything off. Yeah, they will be chased out by those Dragoons. In the meantime, MC going to be pushed down here from a three-way alliance. <laughs> Zerg, Terran, and Protoss siege tanks covered by Zerglings and Dragoons. I've never seen something so scary. And, you know, Dragoons are already pretty good if they slightly outnumber the Dragoon count. But with Vultures tanks and Zerglings here, this could be a fatal blow. Yeah, the rates of MVP coming down, they seemed like a cool idea, but they are not going to help against this Dragoon count. Absolutely not. This is looking like it's just about over. Nesty has already died. MC is about out of here. And that leaves just poor MVP with his rates. GG is called. And that will be that for the first three versus three of the day. Can I tell you something, Artosis? Yeah. 
tell me something tasteless. Three versus three is pretty damn cool, actually. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. that was a really hype game. It was honestly a little bit hard to follow because there was so much action happening back there, but you can see how uh, it can shift back and forth. Between oh yeah. Somebody's defending. It looks like oh maybe they're just they're gone they're dead but they hang on they've got a, a little bit of workers they start to come yeah. back maybe that other team overextends and they can punch back mm -hmm. counterplay so important and as much as two v two is exciting honestly that game was crazy yeah it it was really well done as well because the first player that really seemed to take a lot of damage was Rain in the bottom right and you know they dived on him they sent so many basic units in there they definitely did some damage but then last with those vultures just destroyed everyone. That little bit of extra tech allowed him to dominate a big part of that game. We also saw why Nest is such a strong team player. He really managed to do an incredible job. <laughs> and we're going to see how he does here in our next 3v3 matchup. It's going to be on Big Game Hunters again. But this time around, they're playing StarCraft 2. All right, here we go into Big Game Hunters on StarCraft 2. It's a remake of the wonderful StarCraft 1 map. Uh, not as popular in StarCraft 2 as it was in StarCraft 1 and as it still is in StarCraft 1, but basically the same idea. Yeah, it doesn't have as many minerals, I think, as we need. I think we need a disgusting amount of minerals <laughs> to truly just aesthetically get that BGH yeah, feel. Yeah, yeah. Um, where it feels like you're playing in a cubicle of minerals is the mm -hmm. way I always looked at it. But you can see um, just in that last game that Although thematically we look at BGH and as far as team games go, we kind of imagine these real wars of attrition. Mm -hmm. It's hard to ever break anybody. Um, it, it is in some ways almost at the lower levels a turn-based game <laughs> as far as sure. feel goes where you're sitting back, you're massing up, you're trying to make a bunch of these, these powerful tier three units. At pro play, it's a bloodbath. It's a brawl, it's chaotic, it's fights right away. We may see the same thing here in StarCraft 2. Yeah, I'm, I'm really interested to see because I've seen very few StarCraft 2 3 vs. 3s. It's not a mode that you really think of a lot in StarCraft 2. Uh, but are we going what to see... What are you see, talking like, about? When people ask me about StarCraft 2, the first thing I do is I start talking about 3v3, and then they go, no, no, I'm talking about GSL, and I go... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That, oh, okay. GSL? No, I, I thought, watch that, too. Yeah, 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 yeah I, I watch and cast that, but mostly I'm thinking about 3v3. Yeah, Especially on Infinite <laughs> Mineral maps. <laughs> yeah. Well, looking at this one, our StarCraft 1 pros are on the right side of the map, all in the blue. Uh, the bottom left, as well as the top left, are going to contain our StarCraft 2 pros. Uh, and this should be interesting to see exactly how far up the tech tree everyone wants to go. We already see factories for both the Terran players, those are cybernetics cores, just about to finish for our Protosses, and of course, good old Zergling speed coming for uh, <laughs> for at least uh, Nest T, whereas the Roach Warren coming up forever. Yeah, I like the Roach Warren play a little bit more here. I, I get the idea of Ling speed, and that mm. means we're probably going to have to have Banelings. I don't know what yeah. your take is on Banelings in a 3v3, but it does seem like if Banelings miss any of their targets at all, you are going to get overwhelmed <laughs> and counterplay pretty quickly. Um, Maybe you can bust through wall-ins and things, kill static yeah. defense structures, well, something like that. You definitely have to try to end a game quickly if you're going to go with, with Banelings. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, the, the thing about Banelings is, even though they're, like, the best unit in the game in a one versus one, mm -hmm. if, if they don't connect to their targets and there's other players that are just massing up units that can gain value over time sure. via their damage, and the fact they can also soak mm -hmm. some damage and then heal... That's huge. You know, I think the explosivity of the Banelings is going to be really useful here. I guess we'll see what Nesty ends up doing, but I'm liking his choice, to be honest. With the other units from his uh, teammates kind of supporting and getting them in there should be good. Now, we have a couple of Depths actually shading in while some Lings come up. Uh, the Lings will uh, attack the Queen a bit while the Adepts go for drones. It looks like the same thing happening on the other side. You can see already fights here and there. Again, it's important to try to have a, a goal as a team often, even though you'll see skirmishes throughout the map, usually it's about trying to um, cripple one player early on enough that they're not very functional in a later part of the game, mm -hmm. ideally killing them off so that they can't do anything at all. Yeah, a lot of uh, adepts out on the map right now. Immortal production starting right now for uh, MC as well. Trying to get forward and get something done. I, I love the mobility of these adapts. Look at them go. 
Okay, here we go. Uh, a, a lot of damage being done over here. Keep in mind these SUVs that are bunched up. If these Hellion shots can connect enough, that's going to wipe out all of those workers. Huge amount of damage mm. over here to our Blue Terran. Oh, man, this attack doing so much to last. He's trying to get out of there, losing just about every single SCV. He is not even mining at this point. And that is the kind of damage we were talking about these players looking for. We've got an Oracle over here hitting MVP's SCVs, but keep in mind that MVP uh, is going to be able to remake that because the Oracle has a limited amount of energy and mm -hmm. can't just keep dealing damage like we saw on Banshees, for instance, over here. Oh, man, the amount of damage being dealt is so much and so quickly. Last, already having to vacate his main base. A ton of SCVs very badly hurt down there at 6 o'clock. Taking that damage. Roach is coming as well. There's just non-stop action everywhere. So much more damage being dealt over here now to the Zerg in the bottom right, but the Roaches from that Zerg come in here now, killing off as many SCVs as can be. Uh, we do have, um, it looks like from uh, MC, of the Immortals now out in the game. He's going to have a very robust army that can take a lot of fights against basically anything, but here, there's so much damage happening all over the place, it's hard to see who's going to really be economically viable <laughs> in the next minute or two. Yeah, yeah, well, I would say last is pretty darn hurt. Uh, MVP has taken a ridiculous amount of damage, but so has effort. That leaves Rain, MC, and Nest T all kind of still in this. That's right. Um, we're seeing the players that have taken fatal damage try to buy time. Mm -hmm. Seconds make a huge difference. You never really want to truly give up any way that you can give assistance in a game like this. You want to try that as much as possible. And look at this, still harassing a little bit here. Rain getting what he can done. Uh, he has a reasonable army, but I'm getting very nervous for him, right? Like, he, even though, for instance, MVP has very little, he still has three cloaked banshees. That's going to help a lot. Whereas Effort and uh, Last, they literally don't have anything to fight with. Yeah, it's, it's a very important point. As crazy as this game has been, we're going to have to add up who's in what position now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, uh, Right now, MC appears to be the king of this <laughs> map. I yeah. mean, this army that can push in here, uh, especially with the War Prism, this is just a good army overall. Ooh. Links are going to come in here as well, and Banelings are being warped. Mm -hmm. This looks like a very tough spot here for Rain. Yeah, Rain does not have much of a shot right here to hold on. GG is called, and I mean, it just continues to be split right down the line, right? The StarCraft II players are dominating in the StarCraft II matches. The StarCraft I players killing them off in those StarCraft I matches. Really, uh, I think our hardest game to follow. Yeah. I was struggling to cast that. Um, it was very impressive to see the damage that was dealt early on right away. Um, and how punishing it was. I was impressed to see that the um, Baneling play, mm. although it didn't kill a player early on, it did allow them to close it out very quickly. Sure, sure. And uh, yeah, 3v3 looking pretty fun. No, oh, the, uh, the amount of action that we saw there, I think it might be time to uh, turn GSL into a 3 versus 3 that's tournament. That's right. <laughs> um, and that's all we're going to have as far as team games go. Up next, we're going to be doing the free-for-alls. That's right, free for all time. This is going to be great. The map will be Big Game Hunters. We're going to have three StarCraft II players, three StarCraft I players, but no real alliances. That's right. Um, so these kind of games are very chaotic. They are ones that are absolutely, to some extent, uh, given to chance, but mm -hmm. they're in some ways so fun to watch because you never know who's going to come out on top. There's all these individual fights happening oh, at yeah. different times, and you add all these different variables together, you find out who eventually is the king of the hill. So let's go ahead and hop into our games. Okay, so we're gonna be on the map, Big Game Hunters. It should be noted that since this is a money with uh, incense, uh, infinite minerals, it will be a little bit different from our, uh, mm -hmm. like a StarCraft II FFA as an example where there's just no way to uh, uh, ever run out. Yeah, there, there's a ton of mineral patches, as you see. We just saw Effort is at 12. Rain up in the top right over here at 3 o'clock. We have Nesty. The bottom right corner is last. We have MVP down in the center bottom at 6 o'clock. And in the bottom left, we're going to have MC. So everyone's playing their main race. Uh, it looks like the top left spawn and the 9 o'clock spawn both uh, completely empty. 
and I gotta say, you know, I've I've played a lot of free for alls on big game hunters. I've watched a lot of free for alls on big game hunters, and that top left position is so close to Effort's base. I could see him having a powerful game here. Yeah, it's. Uh, by the way, we have a four pool. Do Almost oh immediately, gosh. I think it was at the twelve o'clock spot. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. 12, given given the um, the uh, locations of of each player and the lack thereof for the two vacant spawns, twelve o'clock would be the best to go into a macro game. Mm -hmm. But we're gonna have quite the opposite. Of that. <laughs> quite so the opposite. In this case, effort an agent of chaos here is gonna go with mm -hmm. the four pull, squeezing out a few drones before having the fastest rush in the game. You know, it's kind of funny, too. I bet you he was doing that to rush the top left, but his overlord is finding that there's no one in the top left, so he's going to have to send his zerglings elsewhere. We'll see what he ends up doing. Is he going to eliminate someone right off the bat? It is a possibility. Yeah, over here in the top right, his neighbor is Rain. Um, now, the thing is, Protoss can totally hold a four pull. It's very yeah, doable with sure. his zealot and probes, uh, depending on how it's controlled here. Um, and we're seeing different little tech trees here on each side. It looks like the Terrans want to go for gases very quickly here. Mm -hmm. Really, Marines in an FFA are not good units. Mm -hmm. You need to tech into something higher. Yeah, you gotta. You can't really get a lot of power early on. Uh, now here come the Zerglings of Effort. This is going to be the first time that we actually see some action this game. They're going towards the top right, towards Rain, who, by the way, is making a forge. So he is going to be plenty safe. He just has to micro heavily here. The first Zealot is not out yet. The Zerglings start to go in, cancels that cannon. The probe's being pulled. The Zealot pops out as well. Ooh, good control so far here from Effort, picking off a probe and not losing anything yet. You can see Rain trying to control, but that Zealot's now been surrounded. It is taken out. And that means these links can continue to dive on top of these probes, or even better, the pylon, which would then unpower that gateway, mm. basically knocking Rain out. I could think we're having a lot of the players smiling, laughing right now. As you can see, this is a really, really bad spot here mm -hmm. for Rain. Yeah, it seemed like Rain was going to have enough, but losing that first Zealot was a crucial mistake. He's lost a lot of probes now, but as the next Zealot pops out, it doesn't seem likely that those four Zerglings are going to finish him off. Yeah, he is barely hanging on, but you know, the problem is that being hurt like that at the start of a game makes it hard to get momentum later on. It's why we're seeing uh, some of these other players make cannons immediately here to try to get some defense, because in BGH, you don't need to expand right away. You can absolutely power up. Yeah, yeah, and uh, that's definitely something we're going to be seeing from Nesty, who's already on three hatcheries, taking that fast expansion. Now, Arain making the cannon, microing his two Zots very, very well here. More and more Lings have come in from Emery. He's really trying to kill Rain off, uh, but with only a couple Lings left over, it seems like this rush is held and Rain is going to be fine. Yeah, if there's a cannon, even not that well placed, it's hard for the four pooling player to really... Uh, close it out. By the way, uh, there's drones now on gas. There's more <laughs> drones on gas at 12 o'clock than there are on minerals. Well, effort, Literally. Effort is smiling something fierce right now. I think he realizes that he's put himself into a terrible position after that rush. Yeah, he's literally in a worse position than Rain is, and he was the first player to be attacked. Yeah. Effort gave up any opportunity of propelling himself into a healthy game later on here so i think the story as we get further and further along here is really going to be about our three players i guess our four players here in the bottom mm -hmm. well i i do like how mvp's playing he's got a seed shank he's got a nice wall so it seems like he can't really die we also saw mc in the bottom left making multiple cannons at his choke so he's going to be completely safe from any incoming attacks at least for the time being uh, and I saw another command center being made by last. So you're right, those players down at the bottom doing a pretty good job, but the greediest player here is Nesty by a mile. I love what he's doing here, powering up, getting the third hatch here, getting the layer, setting up these sunken colonies. Then again, though, you know, BGH, I do feel that Zerg, if you're going to go for the money game here, they mm -hmm. tend to be the weakest. Zerg seem to be a race that... Um, they don't, am I wrong about this? It just seems to me like Protoss with Mass Carrier mm -hmm, Arbiter mm -hmm. probably the best play there yeah, is. Yeah, what, is it, what does Zerg want in a BGH? No, you're, you're, you're quite right. It's hard to play Zerg in big free-for-alls. They just, they don't really have that endgame army. Some players like to go for Guardians uh, and try to utilize those uh, for a massive air army. Other than that, you're kind of sitting around with Defilers, right? Uh, it's, it's tough, though. It, they're generally not the free-for-all king. Yeah, I mean, it can be done. 
especially with players of this caliber. They're you know they know the game in and out. They're able to be very creative with units, but not sure what exactly is going to happen, especially for Nest I mean, It's important to note here. I think the strongest player here, just based off positions, is MC. And that's because he's in the bottom left. Uh, he has bases all the way to the top of the map above him he can take. Mm -hmm. uh, but he's also not <laughs> wedged in between two players. Uh, all the other players are sandwiched, yeah. with the exception of Effort, who has the worst economy of all, because he's purple. <laughs> yeah. And he's continuing to be that agent of chaos that you mentioned before, which is kind of funny. Uh, now, a couple DTs actually walking down to the bottom right towards last. I'm not sure what detection he has. Oh, my God, a double tank drop from MVP up on effort? That's not something I expected. These DTs look like they think they can fit through that hole. They can't. Yeah, I thought they could fit through there, too. But, uh, you know, the the way that the uh, buildings are designed <laughs> is pretty deceptive. By the way, effort, the first to be knocked out. <laughs> That's what you – that is called karma yes. right there. You four pull first. You better be the first to lose here. All the other players laughing right now. Effort turns his camera off, and now it's five players remaining in our free-for-all. Oh, man. Uh, these DTs, by the way, from MC doing quite a bit of damage. MVP Whoa. is teching up to nukes. nukes. What is that building? A oh, ghost? Oh, my gosh. This is going to be fantastic, Taze. This like, isn't the single player. We have a ghost in this game. Dude, MVP really is the GOAT, isn't he? I mean, he already killed Effort with just two siege tanks. That's right. And now here he is going into nukes for us. So... Uh, siege tank drops here. This is not long for this world. <laughs> As mutas are out. I was wondering what the story was, but I guess he's just trying to be active there. Mm -hmm. Now, um, there are some spots on BGH once you get additional bases up here where you can nuke from a distance, but um, we're going to end up in a TVZ fight here where it's Nesty diving on top of MVP with these mutalists wiping out these goliaths. Yeah, those mutas, though, they can definitely get some real damage done. Uh, Nesty getting some revenge maybe for some of the earlier games where they didn't go so well for him. Uh, it looks like the Mutalisks, yeah, they're picking off a lot of SCVs. Uh, last, making Goliath, so he will eventually push them out. And again, quietly on the map is MC. Now note he got a Dark Archon. Now in a free-for-all on BGH, in some ways, the Dark Archon can be the best unit in the game. Sure. If you are to get into a long, drawn-out game, because you can steal an SCV or a drone. Yeah. And keep in mind, although the game caps you on 200 supply, that's for your race. If you steal an SCV, <laughs> you get another 200 supply of Terran. If you steal a drone, another 200 supply of Zerg. Now, I'm not saying that's going to happen, but it's definitely a possibility we want to keep in our minds. Because yeah. oftentimes on BGH, if you can steal a worker, go back and make a hatchery or a command center and start to tech up from there, the other side will concede. Mm -hmm. right, We're going to have a nuke. Ooh, this is so crazy because yeah. there's so many players at once playing. There's a chance Last doesn't notice this right away. Yeah, I know. You hear a nuke and you're like, well, where would that be? You might not even be looking, but I think he actually realized exactly where it's at. Oh, oh, my god, 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 oh, this nuke He's is going to hit. I don't Look think he had a scan. I think oh, he was out of a scan. Oh, my god. I think by our rules, that means that he wins the FFA now, right? We can end this whole thing. He is That's a moral victory at MVP, okay? <laughs> that is insanity. In the meantime, we actually have MC attacking Nest T here. He brings up his Archon Trio. <laughs> Dark Archon ready for those mutas to come in. We actually have so much damage happening here. And with just mutalisks, I mean, maybe he could get a... Oh, my oh. God. I was going to too, and I was going to say, if he has um, Maelstrom, he can just catch those mutas, and the Archon can clean up most mm -hmm. of the rest here. But this is a lot of damage over here for Nest T. Yeah, Nest T losing a big chunk of his economy and a big chunk of his mutas, as is last getting nuked on his main command center. This is just wild. Who do you think is doing the best so far, Tasteless? I think it's MC. He's taking a base yeah. here. Nest T looked like he had made the right decisions up until this moment, but the problem is, look, mutas are great. You can mass mute against a mecking player uh, in the bottom right, but then you fight a Protoss. You cannot mass mute for too long against Protoss. They will kill you. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I see your point there, but I want to raise you 
nukes and BCs at the same time from MVP. What do you well, think about that, Well, I would say for style points, <laughs> if this was a diving competition, then oh, yes. Yeah. If yeah. this was synchronized swimming. If this was some sort of art contest. Yes. Then there's no question. Mm -hmm, then mm -hmm. this play, uh, this game is a Picasso. Okay. But if we're talking about who's got the right units to actually sure. destroy the buildings at the end of the game. I think we know. Well, we have another nuke going off right now, oh my and God. it looks like it's going to be on oh MC. MC sees oh, it. He's, he's pulling, pulling his probes. He's pulling his probes. He, can he get him out fast enough? Yeah. Mostly think... dodged, actually. Still a decent nuke. Oh, the mutas. Nestis mutas coming up and killing all the probes that went to the natural. A storm goes down. A couple of them, in fact, kill a lot of those. But that was a lot of damage to his economy. Okay, he might have enough for Maelstrom. No, he's the uh, Mutas pull out just in the nick of time. <laughs> and this has already been such a crazy game here. Uh, keep in mind, nobody's economy is to the point where they're looking unstoppable. Uh, again, even though we see a Zerg knocked onto one base, this is BGH. They can mm -hmm. definitely get the hatcheries and the production to be completely viable to propel themselves uh, into winning this game. Wow, this this is just a wild one. There is so much action going on. Look at the BC count as well. Up to four battle cruisers here for MVP. You know, I was joking before about MVP, but battle cruisers are pretty badass in a free for all. It's funny because we normally think about them as this unit that kind of drags the game to a halt in a TVT and occasionally gets stylistic in TVZ, but. It's great to see him here now. The problem is, is that battle cruisers don't lend themselves to mobility, especially against other Terran players. Usually, we <laughs> see battle cruisers made when everything else is not an option, right? Yeah. The motto is basically the air siege tank shot. They can slowly allow you to chip away uh, to through your opponent over time. Well, we'll see what he gets done with it, but he's definitely going to gain a lot of value. Looks like he's going to drop another ghost here right over the turret. <laughs> he says, well, why are you attack me? Oh. I love the banter here. Yeah. Nuke, by the way, how cavalier can you possibly be? A nuke right on the command center? Again, this is all he goes for. Is just He wants the money nukes is I the know. thing. Well, he's making this game a very interesting one at that. By the way, again, on BGH, there are positions, and we're looking at one right now, where you can hit another player's minerals with siege tanks from a distance. <laughs> so although we have Terrans on both sides taking expansions, mm -hmm. neither might be able to mine resources from them. Oh, yeah, that's that's a real big possibility. Uh, we also see Nest here right now. He's got a lot of mutas just kind of sitting there. He's taking a lot of damage this game. MVP taking that expansion, coming over to the other expansion. But look at this, a lot of Goliaths here to push back his BCs. And... Uh, I'm not sure about the MVP player position here because he's fighting off Protoss and Terran. And again, a lot of this just kind of comes down to who is given a better spawn. It's, mm -hmm. it's why Effort really squandered possibly <laughs> winning this game yeah. by four pulling as fun as it was to cast. But um, as the game pans out, Rain, by the way, who we've mostly ignored through this game, he was the player who was beat up during the four pull. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He is starting to come out on the map. He has a lot of space, by the way. I mean, mm -hmm. really, the top left side of the map is his to take if he can manage to do so. He may end up becoming a dominant force later on. That is a real possibility. People have been leaving him alone because he was not in that area, whereas all of these scuffles at the bottom. Seems like Nest T taking the rough side of that. He is, in fact, going up towards Guardians, and that's going to help a lot against a Reaver push. Yeah, this Reaver push coming in here, it's funny because Nest T's done a really good job in these games. But honestly, he has been the punching bag for a lot in this. Whether mm -hmm. even even MC was attacking him. Yeah. Think of where MC is on the map here. Um, but they are starting to push in here now, and this could be the beginning of the end here. Those storms doing so much damage to those mm -hmm. mutas. Nest he needs hold on. He splits his guardians up a little bit. Let's see what he can target down here. Great size storms going down onto these guardians, putting a lot of damage on them. The goons can fight well against them as well. Rain coming in and punishing Nest he even more. Okay, you can see here the mute is taking so much damage here, but really it's about buying time so the guardians can clean this up. But a reaver shot in Ooh. EGH is worth way more than a reaver shot in any normal game of StarCraft because that's all the workers in that position there. Huge amounts of damage going down in ST. He might end up being our second one eliminated. You know, we were talking so. about how Zerg has a hard time in free-for-alls. I think this is showing it a bit, right? You're going up to Hive for Guardians. That's not as strong as BCs. OK, 
Okay, uh, the BC's getting stormed here, but overall continuing to do damage and chip away at MC, who doesn't... It's a funny thing because Protoss can beat Terrans if they go battle cruisers, mm -hmm. but if there's a bunch of battle cruisers, they don't normally have an easy response. They're gonna have to get Dark Archons mm -hmm. and Mind Control, but that's actually not easy to do. A battle cruiser can avoid the Dark Archon. It takes a long time to get the energy for Mind Control. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he is making Dark Archons, right? He's got three of them. So eventually, I think we are going to see him stealing some battle cruisers, which would be really painful for MC or uh, for MVP. But MVP knocks out that Nexus. Looks like MC is going to try to take nine o'clock. Uh, but Rain now has eliminated Nesty. Nesty is the second one out of this, and is starting to push down into last a little bit. Game is. Growing at, at a very odd way. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh my gosh. I got confused by the colors for a second. Th that was That's like, last dropping MVP. Mm, that's like four dropships of Goliaths and a siege tank for good measure. The BCs look like they're going to go for a counterattack. It felt like MVP was doing a great job this game, but last really punishing. Uh, another drop comes in over here. These battle cruisers doing so much damage. This almost seems like it's slowly be, uh, going to become a fight between our two Protosses and last. <laughs> it's just hard to imagine MVP ever fighting back and breaking free from the two players mm -hmm. in between him and the one uncontrolled player in the north. Yeah, well, he's bringing back the Goliaths in the dropships, so the BCs should get picked off now. MC wondering what's going on. <laughs> asking him, asking <laughs> Rain if he's going to take it. Yeah, oh, he's lying too. I don't even have a natural. That's not true, Rain. No, it's not true at all. You have one right there. We just saw it. Um, you know, I think Rain might actually win this. He how, is how looking How just good. would that be after being the first to be rushed to then I be know. the last? He took a lot of damage yeah. from effort that game, or this game earlier on. So that is that is uh, karmic justice coming back for him. He holds on against the vicious Zerg. And now everyone's left him alone to just grow as he wants in the top right. And... Um, you know, I, I don't know the math on this exactly. I'm sure somebody who plays BGH does, but is it ever worth it to have three mining bases on BGH? I mean, there is a limit to how many workers you want to make. Oh, yeah, that's a good question, I don't, actually. Because, you, know, you know, part of me that's so used to casting maps where the resources mine out yeah. very quickly, i.e. normal maps, I'm used to thinking three bases is really when a, a player can power up, but yeah. it seems like there's nothing of convenience by having three bases. I guess, yeah, you're right. With the amount of probes you can actually put on one base, uh, you could be right on that, yeah. Uh, look at this, another mass Goliath drop here, taking out the main nexus of MC. Now, one thing I want to mention is MC made like 10 Dark Archons, probably to steal battle cruisers, but the battle cruisers are all dead. What is he going to use those for right now? Yeah, what is he going to use those for right now? Um, there's actually, here's a question. Are there any um, uh, drones inside the base of Nesty? Could Rain go Ooh. down there and mind control that? Because they basically become dud units. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. Like, there could be some effort drones. There could be some Nesty drones left over. I think it might be uh, even more powerful to steal, like, an SCV. But stealing anything at this point would be really nice. I really want to see MC actually utilize those Dark Archons he's spent so much money on. Yeah, it, it just it makes you wonder, right? I mean, I think out of all the plays in BGH, really the strongest is to steal a worker. But this is also a game where it's been, oddly enough, kind of like a mid to late game fight in all the matchups, mm -hmm. right? We saw the players tech up immediately and try to duke it out. So it's, it's you know, in, in those situations, it's hard to steal a worker, but just some food for thought. Mm -hmm. Last right now, really macroing very, very well. He has a ton of units, the highest supply in the game. Uh, MVP has so little. You know, he, he had so many flashy plays already this game, but he's taken massive amounts of damage. He is in the middle of everyone, like you pointed out. So a very tough position for him to try to stay alive. So... Um, we have Rain beginning to really stretch out on the map. Oh, and, oh my God. Here they come. Now that's more The red dark caterpillar, as we I, call I, it. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to figure out what exactly that looks like. Um, yeah, yeah the, the, that's more Dark Archons than you'll see in all of competitive StarCraft 1 combined. So that's... For a whole year. Yeah, for a whole <laughs> year. That's that's quite a bit. Um, but yeah, what do you do with that exactly right now? 
Those were intended to steal the battle cruisers, which are of not much utility. Mm -hmm. I love, by the way, the idea that Last has come into this with. He's not making anything fancy, just lots of dropships and flying his units around, hurting everybody. I just don't know how long this could possibly work. I mean, realistically, on any map connected by land, dropping mech onto Protoss as if they were Terran yeah. is really the, the Protoss' dream. Okay, hold on, here we go. Ready up. Here we yes! go! Yes! <laughs> Mind control's going down, stealing siege tanks, stealing battle cruisers. Get an SCV! He better get an SCV. There it is, there it is, he's go. got it. He's got it, pull it out of there. Don't let the splash damage kill it. Oh, come on! He oh, loses the splash the damage killed it. He's got to steal another one. Don't worry, there's plenty of Dark Archons. He can steal plenty. He's got enough. If he gets it. If he gets it. Oh, the ghost of MVP going down. MVP might GG coming up here, I have to say. Oh, whoa. Yeah, that's it. Miss Cleo of casting this game. Yeah, that's it. MVP's out. Now, I, if I'm MC, I'm going to steal a unit here. By the way, Rain is going to push through, clean up whatever MC has in this spot over here. And oddly enough, I think Rain might have been too ambitious in this game. It didn't seem like Last had any other plan other than to just keep dropping this. Now, mm -hmm. Rain only has 700 minerals on the map, uh, and he has, a he has a Nexus over here, but I just want to point out, sometimes, even in BGH, you can kill their workers to kill the Nexus, and they don't have money. Yeah, yeah. If oh. you're macroing really well throughout the game in a high-action high game like this, it can happen. It, usually, uh, BGH is for uh, low-skilled players, and so a lot of times players imagine it as just games where they can endlessly make units. But when you get good players, like we're seeing here, they're all spending their money quite well. Yeah. And so that makes for uh, quite a different game. Look at this, a recall going down in last base. Some Psy Storms appear, but of course he will be able to clean this up. Last hasn't taken damage in a long time, has a huge amount of production here, and is going to clean this without too much uh, too much to say. Look at that. Oh, he did steal an SCV, and his command center is almost done. It's Tasis. over. I'm calling it for him. Oh, this is amazing. Does it bump the supply up here on our screen from the observer spot? I actually don't know. Yeah, you don't. It's not I every day that it. you observe a game like this one. I wonder if they program that into remastered here. I don't, I don't, <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. Because what, what happens when you steal uh, another race oh, in yeah. this game is that you get a whole new set of supply. Yeah, I'm actually fairly certain that it's just going to see the supply go above 200 at this point. But, okay. Uh, well, just so people understand, the math function's a little bit different. Yeah, than see, that. MC, 206 of 210. He can right. go up to 400 supply now, but it has to be 200 in Terran and 200 in Protoss. That's right. And if he wants to go up to 600 supply, he needs to steal a drone. Yes. I don't think I've ever seen that, but maybe maybe today is the day. I, I would welcome it. Yeah. That would be a great BlizzCon line. Now, um, the Nexus is coming down. Again here for Rain in the main. And we will see if he can start to recuperate. But last, he's really blowing me away this game. Mm -hmm. He kind of willed his way through all this. Yeah. He is and putting so much out. damage. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. He kills the army. He kills the Nexuses. So that means we are down to last against MC. MC has mass cannons, mass dark archons, a couple battle cruisers to boot. He's going up into Terran tech right now. So... This would be the Terran dream to come back and smash a Protoss that has also stolen Terran units. Mm -hmm. But can he actually do it? Well, he's got uh, the best army right now in a lot of ways with these siege tanks. But, it, you know, I guess if you can steal enough of them, push it back, buy yourself a bit of time, you'll be okay. It's just the overall supply, yes, it's higher for MC, but most of it's in Dark Archons. Yeah, he might want to just... I don't know what you do with those Dark Archons. Recall them somewhere, recall them on top, and try to mind control everything. <laughs> I don't know how you use this very effectively. Yeah, but it's yeah. Just, it's a funny situation because you invest supply in certain units for certain situations, and then when you have um, you know, supply sitting there and stuff that you can't really use, that's a problem. Well, he's trying to mind control, but the Dark Archon's getting in the way more than anything else here. Some Psy Storms going down. Great Psy Storms. Yeah, look at that. Starting to steal some of these tanks as well. The Dark Archons trying to be as worthwhile as they can be. Oh, this is crazy. I've, this just, is. I've never seen a push with Dark Archons where they're just mind controlling stuff, but I guess that's BGH where you really can kind of bend the, the rules of the game yeah. here. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe from here, MC can simply topple last. Maybe. Last still has a lot of production, let's not forget. Maybe he can do a big drop and deal some damage to uh, him elsewhere. 
But yeah, it's looking pretty good for MC. There's not a lot of gas left for our Terran player. Yeah, well also, um, you know, the Terran can actually once again get a hundred more SCVs mining here. Yeah. So get production to an <laughs> insane level. Uh, and then start to make tanks. Mm -hmm. Start to make, uh, I guess you don't really need to make dropships. You can make shuttles are actually better than dropships. Yeah. What else do you want to make? You just make tanks? Tanks. It's all about the tanks, Tasteless. <laughs> the tank is the main unit in Terran vs. Terran. So if you can set up tanks defensively, you're going to be in a great spot. Hard to break. Uh, it looks like last is still okay here, but it, it's looking better and better right now for MC. Ooh, I'll stop messing around. Ooh. Watch out. Like, MC. Listen, man, he's already mind controlled Terran. Look, LOL. Ha ha ha! And he is starting to make mass yeah. factories. Okay, big drop coming out here from last. He's got eight drop ships full. Invading the Terran base. He sees what oh. MC has over here. Is he just going to go right past us? I think I would go for the Protoss. We can't space. kill the humans. They're innocent in this whole situation. <laughs> they don't want to be there. Well, uh, luckily here for MC, he doesn't have all of his gateways rallied, so the Dragoon's going to help against this drop. A massive drop does come into the main base of MC, but it's actually cleaned up very quickly. Yeah, this is why, again, you don't see drops like... What, what, what's, what's happened, basically, is that <laughs> Last has a Terran vs. Terran composition and playstyle that is not going to be the Protoss. <laughs> you, you, need to, you need to push through the Protoss, contain and control them. And I think that MC right now is just too free on the map. Well, you say that. I, maybe he's lucky because he's playing against Terran as well now? Oh, man. Look at this. The Dark Archon's coming up, doing some more damage here. What is Last supposed to do against twice the supply of what he has? You're supposed to find a special key on the keyboard and hit it two times. It's the G key, Artosis. Ooh. He's dead. He's done. <laughs> There's just no way. Definitely that, seems like that. Yeah, that you're going to recover from this because now MC can just flood you. And uh, in case you guys are wondering, because, you know, this is more of a casual setting for this game. Does this ever happen in competitive 1v1 play? It's too hard to ever get to this moment. <laughs> yeah. But a player like MC on the corner left unattended and with this many other players in the game can take it. GG. <laughs> wow. Yeah, in a well-deserved victory here for MC. He gets the style points, stealing that SCV uh, from MVP and then making Terran units himself, mass dark Archons. You can't get better than that. He might have won it anyways, but, you know, we were mentioning this earlier on, with that many players leaving the game before all their buildings are destroyed, which is very normal for a StarCraft game, of course you're going to be able to find a stray SCV yeah. or a stray drone or something. And not only can you find it, you can take it. And even though most of this game was Protoss crushing Terran at the end, the looming threat, the impending threat of tanks, of everything else that Terran can make, coming your way, doubling the supply, there's nothing you can do. Well played there by MC. Uh, definitely the champion of that first free-for-all, but our next one is gonna be in StarCraft Two. And it's going to be the same six players again. Our game is ready to start here. Now, uh, this is another situation where it's kind of hard to grow to be too big until the rest of the players are eliminated. Mm. So we're going to see exactly who chooses to do what. Let's not forget effort for pulled in an FFA to start this off in StarCraft 1. <laughs> Maybe he'll do something similar here in this game as well. Yeah. Okay, game started up. And we are going to have a similar horseshoe shape as far as spawns mm. here. It's almost as if we took the previous game and then turned the map on its side. Yeah. And so the vacant locations will be in bottom center and bottom left. Yeah, we have Nesty up at 12. Then in the top right corner, we saw MVP followed by MC at, at 3. We have Effort in the bottom right. Rain over at 9 o'clock. And the top left spawn is going to be last. All right, very cool. Uh, that means our two closest spawns on uh, BGH are always the top left and the top center. So that's where we might possibly see the earliest fireworks. Again, when you have this much of an income, it is always helpful to still get another base. Uh, keep in mind, StarCraft 2, you can't super saturate on, on patches like you can in StarCraft 1. Um, but. Yeah, there's, it's hard to get an overwhelming amount of the map until most of the players have been eliminated. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I'm not sure how many bases we'll actually end up seeing here because, again, there's like a lot of mobility that was added in StarCraft 2. You can definitely get a lot of damage done quickly with the great harassment tools you have. So I, I do think we're going to see some fireworks uh, right off the bat. Uh, a couple gateways going down here for MC, just teching up. It would be cool to see, like our Protoss players, for instance. Are you going to go Adepts for that ultimate mobility and that strong early damage? Or maybe the Stalkers to build a stronger mid-game army? I almost feel like it's Stalkers, but you never know. It's hard mm. to say. We should also note that there is not any over-the-top, ridiculous, broken stuff in StarCraft 2 mm. MFA like there is in StarCraft 1. And I'm talking about the Dark Archon being able to steal <laughs> a unit. That yeah. is, that is in, in a game that is not players engaging each other directly and that's mm -hmm. an ffa where somebody might go neglected you can uh th that is game swinging on a map like this and in starcraft 2 i don't think there's anything quite of the sort no i mean you could neural parasite a probe and start a nexus right on the spot but that's not very likely yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or yeah like a chained set of neurals against an scv, SCV to make yeah. a command center that would take a while I it think. would that would take some time so that's a lot of mana there yeah so it's not something i imagine we're gonna have happen and i just want to point that out because that was such a theme in our previous game mm -hmm. well it, it ended up deciding it so uh, definitely not going to be the case here. We do have some Adepts and some Stalkers, so different choices coming out. Um, one thing to note on this map, and it's true even in the StarCraft 1 version of the map, but the top center and top left, the two, those two players in those spawns always have a private fight. They have to have. They're always yeah. going to be close together. They sort of share awkward. Because um, this, this map is actually designed to look pretty much identical to the old map, which was yeah. never really yeah. a balanced map. Oh, no, it's not balanced at all. No, no. The two top left positions, like if someone owns that whole area, that is so powerful. It's just so easy oh, yeah. to defend it all. It's all in one choke. It's three bases, basically. So uh, definitely very important. And look at this. He's actually going to go ahead for a bailing bus. Bus right through, but can he actually break everything? There's a Hellion here helping out. There's a bunker as well. Somehow this bailing can't get on top of the bunker to get a kill, so a lot more of those lings are actually killed mm. by the Hellion. A little bit of miscontrol there. Yeah, not doing as well as I think he hoped. That Baneling bust, not quite enough. Uh, and the tech will continue for our Terran player. Over here, we've got some Adepts fighting the drones, doing some damage. But uh, this won't last too much longer. But again, well, you know, as I said before, it's oftentimes a fight between 12 and 1 o'clock. We're seeing it here now. And this may allow the Terran over here in the very upper right to last for a long time. Yeah, we just saw some good Adept harassment in the bottom right. Uh, but I like the fact that that Zerg has uh, another base up, right? Effort's doing a good job macro-wise, pushing his creep spread out a bit as well, and he's kind of the furthest from everyone. Immortals coming into play. This gives you a lot more sustainability here. And I do like that you know, we're seeing Rain tech into that. Mm -hmm. um, I, I always feel like if you're going to be too aggressive in an FFA, I'm not sure what exactly you're doing, because if anybody else is paying attention to you, then you die. Uh, look at this. <laughs> Aliens coming in and uh, seeing what they can get done. The Ling's being absolutely shredded. Some Banshee harassment as well. There is just action picking up absolutely everywhere right now. Okay, Lings uh, are doing so much damage over there to those batteries, and these Banshees now taking on this fight, trying to drive some of those attacking units away here. And it's kind of funny that we're seeing Banshees sort of everywhere suddenly. It really goes to show you that in a lot of ways, Banshees are a direct answer to so many other mm -hmm. units, especially in the early game. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and there's so many games that we don't have, you know, that are free brawls where the Banshee is something that allows a player to last and hang on. It makes a lot of sense to see some of these guys teching into two poor Banshees. Yeah, MVP, of course, as well. Uh, we've seen him really favor the Banshees all day. Uh, so doing a great job with that once again. Coming in here, oh, God, there's a shield battery, but is that going to be enough against two Banshees? Probably not. Oh, in the meantime, wow. GG coming out of Nest T here, being eliminated by a very strong push from MC. I get the idea that, you know, Nest T wanted to try to just come out and smash early on, but it did not end mm. up working out. And you can really see here with the roaming that, you know, an army with stalkers and immortals that's this strong can fight basically any unit comp. Oh, that's for sure, Tasteless. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's been a theme of StarCraft for a very long time, especially when MC's involved. It's one of the things with uh, with Protoss and StarCraft 2 is that, that this, this exact army is like, 
you could, I could put my hand over the screen on whatever is on the other side of that. It's like they're going to be having a hard time. <laughs> it's a pretty good army no matter how you cut it. 100%. Uh, MVP continuing to spread his love or maybe it's hatred with these Banshees, sending them over here, dealing a huge amount of damage uh, to that mineral line as well. MC, oh, taking a big hit. Now we, uh, let's go big picture here. Who's doing very well? We've got, um, um, you know, I feel like e MVP's doing all right here. E effort is still strong. Mm -hmm. He's been yeah. probably the most ignored out of the players in this game here. Yeah. Um, and then I would say it's MC. I mean, MVP looks good, but Banshees eventually, yeah. eventually need units that actually fight and don't just kill off workers. <laughs> you know, maybe MVP's having too much fun in all these free-for-alls because he's dealing a lot of damage, but you're right. Look at this. A ton of Blink Stalkers just walking in, and MVP can do nothing but laugh because he has been focusing on just hurting people with Banshees. He doesn't have anything that can fight this. Yeah, and so uh, suddenly these Stalkers, there is no answer for this. This is a fatal amount of damage. But meanwhile, we have a push over here, and the blue base completely vacant here at 3 o'clock. Yeah, MC in some trouble, no doubt. Uh, it, I mean, everyone is just starting to die all over the place. It seems like this all might be benefiting Effort. Yeah, Effort, who's been playing single player this whole time, ha had it right all along. It's about not engaging anybody in an FFA. That's how you mm. beat everybody else in an FFA. So we are getting very close to having two players left here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it looks like effort now with a bunch of mutas flying in, cleaning up the scraps of that Protoss base. And I guess, you know, MVP technically still has buildings, so his Banshee's going to keep doing this harassment. Okay. Uh, a recall back home, but... Unless I'm mistaken here, I mean, the economic engine here for our Zerg player in the red, um, which is effort, is just going to be mm. way too much to stop for any one player. I mean, having two bases, again, this is BGH, mm -hmm. so production can get insane. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I do worry. I worry about anybody who's got to deal with them. Also, if you look at the top left, the, uh, the the white player and the green player are going to be fighting each other out a lot. Mm. Stalkers are still doing damage, and obviously there's no coming back from that for the blue player, so that's going to be it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, right now, Effort looking very strong. Uh, of course, we have Rain looking strong as well. We still have a bunch of Stalkers out on the map, even though he's lost basically everything, trying to deal some additional damage before he goes. So will this just turn into Effort against Rain? I think it will. Hmm. These stalkers are going to be eliminated. Oh. It's uh, no real damage here to rain. Uh, uh, excuse me, to effort. Effort is just going to close this out. He ignores it. You know, one thing uh, we need to mention is actually Last has been left alone quite a bit. He's actually going into battle cruisers here. He's got a lot of mines as well, which Whoa. are going to really damage this mutiling oh army. God. Oh, my God. Definitely a bad idea there. It looked like it was basically an empty base, but instead they just attacked in. That was huge. Yeah, that, that was a lot of damage done to Effort. He is not used to that happening uh, <laughs> to, to his Mutalisks when he flies around. That is not a StarCraft 1 thing. No, definitely not the case there. Now, uh, our green Terran over here, Rain, uh, just on the left side, he's got a good army, but he doesn't have growth on his side. And I like that he stayed back. It's the same um, is true over here for last, you know, in the upper left. But I don't... Again, I just don't see how Zerg can ever be taken unless they were to team up together, which they can't do, and try to fight him together and then betray each other. Mm, yeah. Uh, MC, by the way, throwing away his last few stalkers here. He's already lost just about everything, so I think we might be seeing a GG out of him. Yeah, there he goes. And that means we only have StarCraft 1 players left here. In the top left, we have last going Widowmine BC. Uh, we have Rain, who's had kind of a balanced army overall, getting Blink now for his Stalkers. And then we have Effort in the bottom right going Ling Muta. Very StarCraft 1 esque unit composition. So, I mean, it's anyone's guess who is supposed to take this. Do Battle Cruisers beat Mass Blink Stalkers? Does the, the mobility of Zergling Mutalisk trump all? 
Uh, I'm going with the Zerg here. Because yeah? Zerg, well, it's not just that. It's not just, you know, the position. It's also the ability to shift in what unit comps you want. Zerg's already pretty good at that, but Everett's really developed quite a bit here. Um, Rain may be able to push Effort here and just try to slam him, and maybe that works. Mm. I don't know that it is, but I think that's what the game plan is, is try to push out, and maybe Effort's been a little bit too active on the map, and mm. that can be punished. Yeah, maybe maybe that is the case. You know, there's a lot of sentries for some Guardian Shield and Forest Fields to stop the Zerglings. He's got a lot of Stalkers, so maybe he can take that out. But, uh, you know, normally Ling uh, Muta is pretty good overall if you don't have that splash damage. I got to say, I'm kind of liking Last's position. The more I'm looking at this, Battle Cruisers are no joke. It, it is a very good point, especially if these guys keep fighting as they are like this. And, you know, Ling Muta is very strong, but mm. when uh, when facing a very sophisticated Protoss army, especially one with pretty good positions, it's hard to ignore this. Mm -hmm. uh, we see the Mutas coming in here now. I'm not sure how strong these Stalkers are going to be against these Mutas. It seems like the yeah. Muta number just isn't getting any smaller because as the Mutas continue to press forward, they're not backing off. The Stalker count is getting lower. I don't Ooh. see much back at home. And I think Effort may be implementing the killing blows here on Rain. Yeah, he's got a lot of economy behind this as well, and it does look like he's going to end up killing Rain. Rain is going to type in GG and get out of here. He lost his army. Nothing left over to defend. And now we are down to a Terran versus Zerg. We have last in the top left, playing with battle cruisers and mines, and of course, mass mutilisk Zergling from Effort, who is taking over the entire bottom of the map. Okay, the Lings are going to come through, doing so much damage over here to these workers. Now, you were bringing this up earlier, Artosis, but I guess the big question is, can you just keep teching into battle cruisers? Battle cruisers are a funny unit in a ZBT, and we're basically in a 1v1 now, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. uh, where the players are going to be in the position that they got themselves into. A lot of battle cruisers can be very tough. Yeah. We're seeing uh, Infestation Pit come down here. Maybe Neural Parasite's the answer. I guess the question is how quickly will Last, will last uh, act on this? Yeah, Neural Parasite is great. Fungal Growth can be quite strong as well. Uh, even just getting up to Hives for some more upgrades so you can go Corruptors later could be good also. Uh, but, you know, the, here's the thing. These guys are not active StarCraft two pros. They're active StarCraft one pros. They That's might true. not know the ins and outs that the active StarCraft two players know about how to fight against battle cruisers or how to fight against Zerg with battle cruisers. Banshee coming up here now. And um, again, it, it, there's a lot of workers in a BGH game, so it's not like killing a few of these is going to be that impactful here. I, I do wonder, though, I feel like you know, Zerg's now growing at a rate that's going to be so scary. Um, and there are plenty of battle cruisers. There's six out here now, but I don't believe that you can teleport across the map and hit any <laughs> location. And I don't believe you can move across the map. Yeah. You would just fly in there, kill a few of them as they teleport back. So I am seeing, you know, a, a play from last that seemed to be set up to make him um, be in the game for a long time, oh. but it's not one that's going to allow him to actually kill a Zerg that's now dominating the map. Yeah, I don't. I definitely do see what you're saying there. Uh, I guess maybe the mines can help him out long term. Sure. Right. Like if you if you have the mines with your battle cruisers, let's say the mutas all dive upon them, you could get that massive splash damage and and maybe deal damage. You know, teleport across the map and hurt him before he can remax on his mutalisks. But yeah, it does seem like a tall order for him to actually do anything to effort. Sure, he can stay alive, but how do you win? Yeah, that's the tough part. How do you win indeed, Artosis? Like, it, it, it's, you could see effort just seizing and controlling. Look at the creep in the middle of the map. Mm -hmm. Completely insane. Yeah, he is, he is taking everything over. You can see that insane APM that effort has always had being put to use. People forget he was a very strong StarCraft II pro for a very short amount of time That's before right. returning to Brood War. But he knows how the game works. He is pushing his creep all over the place. He is taking control of the map. What's he on, like five bases? And it's BGH. Yeah, and you know, from there, how many bases do you have to eliminate? It looks like Lass is gonna try to squeeze into the top center. As this game is slowing down to a crawl, but you know, I'm sorry, what, do we know what the supply is of last? I guess we can't quite see mm. it on this screen, but 
He's going to eventually max out, and then yeah. I'm sure he's going to try to yeah. teleport somewhere, take a fight, and then I guess we just have to see how it's going to go. Well, you know what? He's adding in some Ravens. He's continuing his BC count. I do like how he's pushing around and gaining more bases, slowly but surely. And, yeah, I mean, he's he's getting that crazy army. That's the point, right? That's the plan. Hey, look at this. Effort's actually coming up. Look at that. The mines with some sick connections. Now, there are a ton of corruptors here, and he's dealing a lot of damage. Oh, no tactical jumps coming out of last. Yeah, he's just not making the jumps, at least not fast enough, as these corruptors continue to come through here and tear apart every battle cruiser remaining. And what a twist this is, as in game one, effort for pooling and dying first. <laughs> but in our second FFA on StarCraft 2, in beautiful late game play, he is going to dominate and come out uh, victorious as the last player alive in this FFA. GG. Wow, really well done there. Uh, by effort, he really was just, he took that fast expansion. It felt like he was in a good spot throughout the entire game and he finished it very, very well. Uh, I also do want to point out something that's kind of funny, right? Like during the two vs. twos and three vs. threes, the players from that game won. During the free-for-alls, the players from the opposite game won. Also, in the free-for-alls, it was the players who were the most neglected mm. and in decent spawns that managed to pull out ahead. Again, if you want to win a free-for-all, you have to be retracted. If you're attacking into somebody else, you're probably not spending money developing your own tech, your own army, and therefore you're going to be in a bad position later on. Yeah, well, we definitely saw that work out. MC in the corner, having a great time. Effort at the bottom of the map alone, having a great time as well. So as you guys can see as our, on our results here, it was the PVPs the battling it out, Stork yep. Rain taking it first, after that last an effort. Yeah, and uh, of course, in the StarCraft 1 side of things, we had the StarCraft 1 players win, the 2 vs. 2s and the 3 vs. 3s, and vice versa, of course. Uh, with the StarCraft 2 ones. As far as the 3 versus 3 match went, same story. Yes. Uh, I actually had a lot of fun doing these 3v3s. Mm. And I'm glad we got to end this on the free-for-alls. Uh, as you guys can see here on our screen, it is MC and Effort who came out last. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah you, Nesty did not have a great showing in the free-for-alls, as you see. He was first eliminated in the StarCraft 2 one and second eliminated in the StarCraft 1 uh, one. And look at that, last was actually second place in both, Rain third place in both. Wow, look at that. That's some cool stats. Yeah. Um, you know, free for alls while not as competitive, they are a lot of fun to mm -hmm. watch, and it's always a drama about who's going to spawn where, mm -hmm. what kind of fights you have, what decisions are made early on, and I'm glad we got to cast some of them here for BlizzCon Lime. Yeah, yeah, definitely very fun. The StarCraft Legends match, delivering, I would say. I would say so. It's so cool to have these guys come together and have some fun matches for us. I know the world is a complete lockdown here with COVID. We can't all have these gatherings like we used to in the past, but hopefully that's gonna be changing in the future. But I appreciate these guys who have been such a big part of history coming together, uh, joining us here and, and giving us some great entertainment in such a classic game. Yeah, they were great games, great entertainment as well. Let's go ahead and jump to a quick interview with them, see what they think of that match. 어 이런 블리즈컨 같은 큰 무대에서 좀더 멋진 경기라고 보여드리지 못해서 너무 죄송합니다. 앞으로 더 열심히 해가지고 좋은 모습 보여드릴 수 있도록 하겠습니다. 블리즈컨이라는 게 블리자드 게임의 모든 게임들을 그리고 많은 공부나 소식들을 제공해주는 그런 파티잖아요. 그래서 좋은 축제가 됐으면 좋겠고 좋은 시간 보냈으면 좋겠습니다. 네 오랜만에 경기를 이렇게 스타 원 투를 하게 돼서 너무 재밌었고 비록 온라인이지만 블리즈컨 재밌게 즐겨주시고. 네, 새해 복 많이 받으세요. 스타 1에서 이제 2대 2에서는 아쉽게 졌지만 개인전에서 제가 압도적인 승리를 거뒀기 때문에 사실상 뭐 우승자가 아닌가 이 이벤트에서 네, 오랜만에 이런 또큰 이벤트 매치에 초대해 주셔서 너무 감사하고 정치의 중요성을 좀 많이 느꼈던 것 같아요. 앞으로도 이제 스타 1과 2둘다 이제 많이 사랑해 주시고 새해 복 많이 받으세요. 제가 운 좋게 오랜만에 스타투를 개인전에서 이기게 돼서 너무 기쁘고요. 어, 생각했던 대로 또 재미있게 경기한 것 같아서 뿌듯한 것 같습니다. 앞으로도 이제 더 많은 경기, 좋은 경기 보답해 드릴 테니까 많은 응원 부탁드리겠습니다. 어, 많은 팬분들이랑 또 이렇게 블리자드에서 또 기억해 주시고 초대해 주셔서 정말 감사드리고 다음에 또 이런 거 있으면 은 어, 재미있는 경기 할 테니까 그때 꼭 응원 많이 해 주셨으면 좋겠습니다. 네, 저도 너무 즐거웠고요. 감사드립니다.
네, 경기 시청해 주셔서 너무 감사드리고요. 블리츠컨 앞으로 남은 이벤트들 많이 시청해 주시고 저를 영원히 잊지 말아 주시길 바랍니다. 다들 새해 복 많이 받으시고요. 그러면 다음 블리츠컨 때또뵐수 있었으면 좋겠네요. 안녕. 요새 이렇게 코로나 때문에 전 세계적으로 많이 힘든 시기인데 다 같이 이렇게 힘냈으면 좋겠고 꼭 이겨낼 수 있다고 생각을 하기 때문에 조금이나마 이렇게 도움이 되셨으면 좋겠고요. 이제 남은 블리스컨 이벤트 같이 더 즐겨주시고 저는 스타크래프트 2 게이머 파팅 원인사기였습니다. 네, 감사합니다. Guys, thank you so much for joining us here at BlizzCon Line. It was a lot of fun to see these matches. Uh, and of course, even though StarCraft is such a competitive franchise and it's had some of the best esports moments of all time, it's cool to see the players come here and duke it out in some friendly matches. Yeah, this was a lot of fun here today. But don't forget to tune in tomorrow for day number two of BlizzCon Line. We're going to have the in-game UGC showcase, community showcase, and the wonderful Carbot at work. We love you guys so much. Stay safe, keep wearing a mask, washing your hands, and we'll see you guys next year. Bye-bye.